Okay, they can hear us. Spicy spice. Whoa, it's like super zoom. We all love the spice. Bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Fixed. There we go. I don't know why. It was like super zoomed in. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this month's episode of the Predcast. <laughs> what number are we <laughs> That's on? That's what it feels like. 56. 56. Spicy. It's an official year, bro. We're, we're, we, we out here for a minute, bro. But, um... Right? But yeah, so we got a lot to talk about. We are going to dive into, you know, a couple things patch related, a couple things, you know, that uh, got announced. Going to talk about the future here a little bit, a couple comparisons, but in its own. Uh, There's no sound. No sound? That's what they're saying in chat. They're memeing. I can I, hear it just fine. I was about to say, I'm pretty okay. sure everything right. says it's just working on my sure. side. Sorry. Oh, all right good but anyway didn't want to get too far Sorry. <clears throat> yeah before we actually get too far let's go ahead and do our intros uh let's go ahead and start off with j shreds we'll go ahead and do f6 then pinzo then bearded then myself tell people a little bit about yourself and what you got going on what's up everybody i am j shreds i am the senior manager for live production and game operations at omeda which means i care about all things player experience if you're having a good time i want to know why if you're having a bad time i really want to know why uh, and I kind of fill in the cracks across our team to help make sure that we're focused on the right stuff. Uh, it's my third time on the Predcast. I'm so pretty excited. Uh, two more and I get a jacket, uh, I'm told. So y'all you, better start printing that up. Yeah, it is one day to wear you bro. as long as that's okay. You still got to pay for it. <laughs> wait, wait, we're getting jackets? When the fuck did we get ice cream? <laughs> when you pay for your own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when did we get what? <laughs> it's a ringer reference. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. Oh, so I don't remember that. What are you talking about? Well, <coughs> yeah, if we're getting jackets, to let me know. Uh, but I'm at six. Uh, uh, I stream over on Twitch and just kind of do some PCC stuff. Uh, speaking of PCC, we do have our qualifying rounds coming up on April 6th and 7th. So be sure to follow up on that. Uh, we're on every single social media, so you should be able to find us in a Discord. Um, but I do some casting over there as well. And uh, I just run around the community and kind of say stuff and then sometimes people listen sometimes they don't yeah, i don't listen to f6 so yeah bro yeah. I, I, what do you mean i go into a stream and, and listen to him rage the best part true true <laughs> uh yeah i'm pinzo i stream and make youtube videos mostly on pred uh i stream at like two eastern every day so you know, you can be there for that. You can find me pins on all my socials if you need me for something. But here we do Predcast. Mm -hmm. What's going on, everybody? It is I, the beautiful Wolverine, your Michigan wonder. Uh, this episode 56, that is the Lamar Woodley or Brandon Graham uh, episode. Uh, so love to see it. Uh, oh, you guys didn't know Michigan won the national championship. So uh, better than those Gators would do. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, hey, uh, yo, yo, stay in your lane, stay in your lane, stay in your lane, we're friendly. Um, <coughs> I, I'm excited to talk to you guys about this patch. Uh, I'm actually really enjoying it, so I can't wait to get into it. Um, but I'm also excited to talk some matchmaking with Jace Red, so I can't wait to get into that as well. Uh, but before we do that, we gotta let Windu talk some more, so enjoy. Hey man, I'm not gonna be talking too much, I'm a little on the sick side, but what's up guys, I'm Windu, also known as Windu the Mace. Uh, Basically, as of late, I've just been making predecessor content. I actually got back into doing a little bit on the educational side of videos. So that was a little fun to get into. But uh, yeah, honestly, I've just been playing the patch. I've been enjoying it. And if if we can go right into it, unless you guys have something specific, I'd love to just talk about Argus for a second, bro. I feel like, I, I feel like we, we need to talk about this uh, dwarf Who's slash Argus? gnome the 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 dude that's fucking broken in the duo lane right now son he's just broken in general <laughs> what do you mean my, Agree. my man is, you can put him anywhere and he's fine at this point his ultimate chunks the fuck out of anyone level six bro i was actually amazed as to how much damage that shit puts out it, it's not even the damage to be honest because he's a mage i'm expecting to get like bursted down slow. the slow is like might as well just put a stun lock on it because I'm not going anywhere anytime Bro, the, soon. The amount of times that my jungler is like Chimera and they're walking into the lane and I'm on my tower line and he's like ganking and all I do is press R 
it's just insane like that's all that's all you have to do yeah i'll throw out my stun i'll miss that shit of course but then i i, I ult and if i hit one shot for this slow they're just, they just die it's crazy yeah and um again because i here's the thing i've seen plenty of argus mid i think argus mid is a you know they'll be fine let the mid laners handle that shit i don't play mid lane quite frankly they'll, they'll be all right they'll figure it out they'll be all right yeah they'll be all right but support my dude holy yeah. shit bro deck decker isn't running that that duo lane anymore bro argus is fucking disgusting with that stun and it's such a it's such an easy confirm too bro like i i see argus support i'm already like <laughs> well fuck I uh, this is the I I'm I'm gonna need some extra ganks over here, son. Like I'm gonna be real with you. This is gonna be rough. Yeah, the Argus Wraith lane is not fun. It is not fun at all. Yeah, I don't think the ultimate slow is the problem there. I honestly think his stun is a problem. I actually don't, I don't think his stun crystal. is his most broken ability. Yeah, I I don't think it is. I I honestly. I don't it's like how the stun. It, I don't like that lob of it. It, 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 I, it. It's really weird to throw. I mean, I, I need to play some more to get used to it. But I, I had three matches with him uh, yesterday, and the stu the way he throws it, and the arch, and I don't know. It, it, it's it's the same thing as the Morgash, like the little reticle. It's like he gives you the like the little dashes. Like, oh, if you hit this mark, it's gonna go fifty meters. If you hit this mark, it's gonna go forty meters. Like it's like, but you don't. It's just there. It's like you, there's no way to actually like, okay. Let me get my mortar out and actually it launch one. Getting used to for sure. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I to me, I, I a good, a good Argus is gonna land their stud. Yes, but it, it's not. I don't think it's a a, a guaranteed. You know, like bam, you're just gonna. It's so easy to hit or whatever. And I don't know his other abilities like his RMB. I was I was shooting some of the RMB. They're literally just able to like I, it, it, I the the bullets go so slow on the RMB that it's like I felt like they were just able to just weave in and out of them. It's like dodge well, back and forth. I'm like what is happening here? You know what I think like, is my uh, was right on point, and they're just like they're just trailing them every time. You know what I think? It's cool as hell, but also I I don't fully see the the po the point of it. How his his particle beam, his RMB, how it kind of tracks a little bit. So if you miss, you can see it arch all the way around them and just hit absolutely nobody. But if you're just hitting point blank in front of you, it'll hit. Like, why is there this this arch if you miss around them sort yeah. of by what's it? What is it? What is that My all about? My only issue with the right click is I think it has a lot of visual clutter to it. That's that's my only issue with the right click. I think once you start, once you get like three projectiles thrown out, I you, I just can't see where I'm aiming anymore. Like I can't it, I can't see the enemy hero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I don't. I didn't really feel that there was. <clears throat> what was throwing me off is I played against an Argus mid, and this guy w was good with him. He's he's had some time with him, but like I every time he threw his E. Like as his E was happening, like there, I, there was the it, it, like the stun ball and the E were going at the same time. I, like I, it felt like he was hitting QE at the same time. I'm like, how what like what how is this happening? Like what is going on that all of a sudden like it just the E's pop, popping up as the stun ball's hitting me like it just perfectly. I'm like, what is? It was crazy how he was able to do it. And oh, I'm that's not saying travel it's, time. It's just the instant cast to be honest. All he has to do is the lose. same thing as like Gideon Rocks. Quick. Yeah, make him land at the same time. So how to balance him? So instead of just get uh, what's sitting here pointing out everything uh, is like ah, what a his passive. His passive is just what makes him absolutely the scale like on, on the infinite RMB. Are they yeah. the infinite particles? I think, I think his damage definitely needs to come down. I think the only ability that's like actually broken is his E. Yes. I think the slow on his E is is about twice as strong as it needs to be to be completely honest 40 percent slow and a pillar that blocks movement and it pulls you at the end like i know the damage on that ability is in high but it's so insane box mcleod said his rmb is damn near lock on and i i completely disagree because like, i felt like it was like something yeah, that was it, that. It, yeah. it was hard to actually like i'm telling you it has with as slow as the bullets actually move or what you call you gotta lead it. like you gotta lead like crazy like and it's like it, it's not lock on for sure um now i also 
again i know i play at a lower uh a lower mmr than than you guys um the only time i saw a good argus was when me and windy were teamed up with our friend Carmiro. other than that i've yet to see a good like an actual like oh my god this guy's running the lobby argus like all these other arguses like they're like okay they're not bad but like i so everybody's in there saying argus is op but i've yet to see like an op argus like, well, I don't I'm think like, that's what he does like it's a lot easier to see or to like again like run a lobby as a character like bellica because you can insta kill people right yeah, Argus doesn't really his do influence that. like that's not fights. what that character yeah. does i don't know what y'all been but playing I'm, I'm, but, I but i'm not even Z. seeing that influence is what i'm saying I'm, i don't feel like there's an argus that's like oh my god if this if we get this argus out of the game we, we win it i've never felt that way about that i, no, I don't like feel like this gadget. character is op at it's all the same as playing against gadget you don't you don't you kind of don't realize how much gadget is doing until you die and look at your damage recap and see that you ate four hats that did 400 damage each and a right click that did 600 and an, two ticks of the ultimate that did a thousand and it's like oh okay that guy actually did do quite a bit of damage over the course of that fight like it's not uh, it's not high impact really like his stun is high impact just because it's crowd control right but it's not you don't he trades people. he trades very easily especially in the early game as well but i play well, i think early against his, his laning phase is really good yeah i play against zhi toasty and man if you know who those are um in All with argus in support, support. I presume. yeah um you'll you'll realize real quick that like he, he, he is that's where he's a problem definitely bro. yeah like it's it's not fun well again so, it's like i like i was i was watching some scrims the other day and it's they were playing argus support and argus is sitting you know like basically in fang tooth pit and the carry's like hey ult this guy and he the enemy carry was alone in lane and he just ults the carry and he's so slow and it does just then enough the damage right. where, like he just gets run down that's just game over that dude just dies how, how do you guys if, if you had ultimate power how do you fix him in support without nuking him in mid because like you were saying he feels fine but not crazy admit it like what what is what needs to be changed about his kit that doesn't make him unusable in mid with just oh, flat see. like penzo said take his maybe drop down to 30 percent slow on his e um his e is then, the main thing i think yeah. that needs nerf um i would take his stun down to like one second kind of just take that extra quarter second down and then i would definitely reduce his slow on his ultimate i think it should be more like a scaling if you hit two shots he's slowed by like okay now he's 50 percent then if you hit all three they're slowed by 70 percent instead of just a standard slow so what do you what do you give him back in a buff if you said he's like fine but you know relatively balanced in mid I, you, I obviously you need to nerf you need to nerf him a little bit in support but like what do you what do you do if you could give him something to compensate for those nerfs to make sure that he doesn't just be bad in mid what what is damage that? yeah you just have i just buff his passive to be honest i, th I think, I think once you buff ultimate. his passive i think you give his ultimate I think, damage i will say as far as like support goes i think even if you left everything as is and just shrunk down the actual area of confirm for that stun to make it a little bit more of a skill shot instead of forg uh, as forgiving as it is because right now you can kind of miss and still land a stun on somebody if you just made it more like for example decker stun fucking nukes people decker stun hurts bro but decker stun is so easy to fucking miss if you're not on point with it like i don't th i don't think the argument is there as far as like if they land the whole kit it's the fact that the stun and the slow can lead to so much easy confirming of abilities that it's just like hey man it, it's like playing support on easy mode with argus right now that shit's just nuts i think you also if you're gonna but like z was saying if you give him damage his support value does go up so i think you'd have to like trade into but i don't does it though i don't i would just it trade does. into his mana cost early game so like you don't you okay sure give him some more damage but how often is he able to actually use his abilities early game, right? So like you take down away his CC, you give him a little bit more damage, but to stop him from doing so much damage early game in that early trade we were talking about, you reduce pretty much his base mana or his base mana regen, or essentially just put a little bit more mana on his abilities and you kind of take away that early pressure that he has. Basically the same thing that we did to Gadget when she was yes. running support. Yeah, it makes sense. 
I'm done talking yeah, about the thing, the thing that's always hard with a character that's uh, like this, that has such a discrepancy, I mean, kind of like Bearded was pointing out, that there's such a discrepancy between the really experienced and skilled players that are landing that stunt every time and, like, landing those shots at long range, <laughs> and then a newer or less good player that is going to struggle to know, like, what's the travel time on the ult and how much do I need to lead that shot? And, like, how do I use the grenade targeter on his uh, stun? I think he's definitely gonna take some adjustments for sure, um, but I think at higher levels he's probably disproportionately good. I think he's a character like Wraith, where like you look at his win rates, and I bet I haven't I haven't actually looked at them yet, but I would bet if you look at his win rates, it does this, and then all of a sudden does that once you hit like you know sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred uh, MMR. Probably. I would agree. I think once you figure out how good this character is at just spamming abilities, I, I think it's nuts. I mean, you cannot, like he just, he stops you from walking through the map, but he does it in such a harsher way than like a character like Gadget does that it's so, uh, it's just, it just feels way stronger. Cause like any corridor inside the jungle, he blocks off with his E. Just, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Run through there and just get blocked? Walk through it? I mean, seriously. Yeah, like I gotta say though, he is he is fun though, right? Oh, he's oh, fun. Yeah. Oh, I think he's, really he's fun. He's really I, fun. Like I know I know we're jumping right into the balance yeah. stuff, but like I just want to put out there, like the dude is fun. So Bro, I one eighty really blinked into play. the fucking crystal. So there's definitely no side of like fuck <laughs> this guy that also comes along with being fun, bro. <laughs> no, I I had a uh, I was I was like Gideon rocking a wave and he put down a crystal and my Gideon rock hit the top of his crystal and just it just completely blanked my ability. See, I think that's great. I think I think, I think it's hilarious. No, I think it's crystal. fantastic. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Yeah. I saw I Nargus like, boop his own Zarus out of an ult, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that was feels good. <laughs> we had we had Kira. All right, OG heroes, right? We had Kira come out and people say she was a one-to-one -one Vala or whatever from, from HOTS, right? Yeah. And then we have uh, uh, Zerus, which people were saying he's a lot like somebody from League of uh, Legends. Pantheon, Jarvan, Formix. Yeah, yeah, there you go, right? So, uh, but now we have Argus. I had somebody come to my stream and say that this seems like a completely original kit. Bro, I mean, I, nobody, I nobody's comparison. sitting here talking, nobody's sitting here talking saying, hey, this is, this is, this ability is, 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 Somebody's from from Smite. This ability is something you know, they're not having this conversation right now. I'm not saying it doesn't That's exist. True. I'm just saying people aren't having this conversation. I had so one I think, comment. I think Ometa has improved when they're putting their kits together, at least here that because I'm I'm not expecting them to have something that's completely original that we've never seen before with as many heroes as League of Legends has, as many heroes as Smite has. You know, it's going to be hard to make something completely brand new. But they did it. I, I think they did well enough here, but that well, people aren't having this conversation. So shout out to them. But what do you got, Windu? I was gonna say. So that, there was a YouTube comment that pointed out similarities, and all they said was, "Damn, bro, with that new Argus kit, now they're definitely gonna have to rework Grim, bro. Because that lob, that's a Grim lob. It just doesn't displace you. It stuns you. That ultimate, that's a Grim ultimate. It just doesn't lock on. And I was like. Yeah, I've I can also see seen it. a lot of people comparing him to Grim. <laughs> I can kind of see I mean, it. Now, we, granted, we, that's just two of the abilities, but the, the precast before we were talking about what his abilities would be. I mean, his E is essentially like Chernobog from Smite. Um, a little bit different, in like what it does, but it, it's it's kind of just an AOE kinda, on the ground, kinda. and it that's, creates like a, a stun. That's a bit of a stretch. I, I think you're. I, I think you're it's a circle. A like they're both bit. circles. They're both circles. I mean, I mean it's closer to Provide. like it's it's legitimately it's no closer fauna. to Terra's Terra's monolith. Once yeah, she breaks it'd it. be more like. But uh, his R and B though is definitely like Tiamat's. Like, I, that's what I got it's from kind it. Kind of a Tiamat one. Yeah. I mean, it scales with level two. I mean, yeah. it's, again, it's not. I mean, Tiamat one is obviously not infinite, but correct. Kind of. Give me the same vibes though. It's a lot. I mean, the only, like the only big comparison <laughs> I had was like his ultimate to uh, Jin ult. Like that was the only like semi-comparable ability. I could see it's that. Because Jin ult is execute damage. What do you guys think about his ultimate range? Like I, people, are, <laughs> his range is, is is insane. I'm like, I'm like, it's. I, I actually like, think it should be a little farther. I don't think it's I, that far. 
I I think you should be a little bit clearer to know that you're in the alt range and that it got activated. Because right now you it's can just see, but you can see the edge of the circle. circle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see the edge of the circle, but if you're well within around the corner or something like that, you have to legit look at the far edge of the circle. Max Rain said, realize I do I'm think it should ulted. be louder. I do think it should be louder. It should be like, uh, you know, like in uh, Overwatch, if someone ults from spawn, you can hear their ultimate. Like, I need to hear that ult halfway across the map. Yeah. Right? Like, or like Thanatos going into the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, you know, someone's around. Windu, so you, what you're saying is like, if you're not next to the edge of the circle, like, let's say you're actually in range, so you're not, but you don't, like, he's behind a wall somewhere but you're actually like really close to it you're not next to the circle you're saying you can't see that line so you wouldn't even know if you're in range or not that's Bro, what you're getting at i, I was in front of the tower argus is behind his tower ulting i thought this motherfucker was backing right so i'm a murdoch <laughs> so i just lean down and i'm like easy snipe easy snipe we Bonk. fucking traded bro we literally <laughs> just and i'm like the fuck is this he was in ult i didn't know the ground didn't change color that line was fucking way the hell back there behind me i couldn't see that I shit think, i think the big problem is because he's also so short he's literally the size of a minion bro so, he can hide behind minions yeah, he can hide behind minions from richter hopes but that's another story but the fact that hey that's kudos to a meta though because a lot of people were saying like you if you you make this dwarf character and you don't make them small that's going to be an issue they actually made him small like and that's a good job on them like they you actually did well in there but he's also got a decent hitbox too yeah, yeah, but now you can't see what he do, owns, because I don't even know if he's, like, doing anything. I just like, oh, there's a little creature over there just doing things. Well. Yeah. I don't know yeah, if y'all remember to the... Against that character was terrible. Cannot snipe that guy. I don't know if you remember the last time I was on here, and you asked me for a teaser, and I said we were working on some, like, alternate hero shapes, and some, like, you know... Uh, different. You just different I would have not guy. known you were talking about the that. whole time. You just meant a short guy. <laughs> <laughs> not not the only one we're working on, but like oh, that was the one less. that I had just seen that day. Um, was like we're gonna get like a rat attack. It's actually so it's actually now. super cool that what our team did. They they built this entire animation rigging system that allows them to scale characters like up and down and do all sorts of weird limb proportions and still have animations work across uh, like a bunch of different body types. So they created the dwarf character that still uses the same kind of like natural humanoid animations without having to do like custom rigging for it because they spend a bunch of time building this super cool system that's going to let us build dwarves and i don't know spiders or whatever um you know spiders? in the future uh i, I mean that, a, that was that one tease? of these that a teaser uh, that was one of the concept characters one of the uh, original Paragon. concepts yeah well, I know, spider I know. hopping it's off walls you know penzo's fishing penzo's Ed, fishing I, I really kind of penzo, <laughs> penzo's fishing pretty hard like i, I just went to like fish fish the character? Next concept fish? character confirmed by jay shreds <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a spider that fishes dwarves uh, yeah that's that's fish yeah. with a ph <laughs> oh man <laughs> all right but that's cool uh, though i like that i think that's pretty cool to see how yes. they'll be able to implement that it's it's a, it's a lot of tech that's going to that we are having to do the first time that we do new characters like this but that is going to make every subsequent time we want to do a weird like non six foot humanoid character it's just going to be a lot easier to, to prototype and design penzo size character got it <laughs> Damn. All right. Six, how tall are you? Six one. Okay. No way. How tall do you think I am? No idea. That's what I thought. Five nine. Good try. <laughs> I'm just throwing numbers out there. I don't know. All right. So keeping on with Argus here, real quick, uh, and in the patch notes, I don't know if we talked about this before with these patch notes. I don't remember if they've actually had these in other patch notes. So correct me if I'm wrong. But I love the fact that with their ability breakdown, they actually have little clips of how the ability actually works, so you can see it actually being being uh, uh, operated on or operated uh, is great. So, because I, I hate like reading it, like, oh, it, it's a ball that the, you, you throw, okay, like, but you don't actually see what happens with it. Like, actually being watched the little video and seeing it is great. I love that they put these in these patch notes. Uh, it definitely would have been great, though, if it was before or like the same day as they released, like, the, like, the, uh, hero overview. 
yeah not the hero video the other one the like the initial like the intro trailer um just kind of like oh wait we're seeing like a two second clip of the ability but we're not seeing it in game yet so like they released like the hype trailer then they released like the patch notes with that and then they released like the full gameplay i feel like that would be a good release path okay That's me though mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right uh new soft currency um that that actually hit pretty hard yesterday when i loaded into the game and all of a sudden got hit i, I like i had like 23k just sitting there i'm like holy shit i'm like all right got yeah. enough now um i think we have enough for like the next three or four yeah. characters well depending um, how long you played or who you know how you know who well, I mean, you just from the end of season rewards f6 is talking yeah i'm just like there should be nobody that's like Oh, I have to play this much to like unlock a character because I feel yeah, like I got, I got 40k a significant account, amount of amber just for playing. Not even like even if you take away like the season rewards, I feel like you get a ridiculous amount just for playing. I had like after I bought Argus, I had like almost 15k before my end of season rewards hit. Yeah, and that was in that much. two days. I didn't have that much. I did notice that uh, somebody I was playing with yesterday, they got 370 uh, Amber for the match, and I got 170 Amber for the match. I'm level eight, they're level six. So I'm like, I'm, I was confused on what happened there on why that would be like that. Uh, is it based on, do you get Amber based on how well you do individually? in the match well experience Absolutely is attached not. experience is attached to a modifier for new accounts so is it possible yeah. that that modifier is also applying to the amber on those new accounts not a new i mean it's not a new account though the person i was playing with well, it's, it, everyone's everyone's account level went back to one um, right with the patch so right there, there so that's what i'm saying he used level six i'm level eight on on the, the reset so you would patch. get less why would this i get less because his account level is lower. You get more at the beginning than you do at the end. Yeah. And by the time you get to like level 10 or level 20, you get like just normal. There's no yeah, modifier getting like on this. like 80 there's... amber a game. I think you get like certain levels, you get a boosted amount as well. It's every four levels. Every yeah. four, right. Uh, I'll be honest. I, I don't know what's happening there. I haven't, I haven't looked at the <laughs> behind the scenes of the, the amber system. If, if, you got a, if you got a question or a concern, like I could definitely check I... with the design team, but... I the, the intent is definitely, yeah. The intent is definitely for people to feel like they're getting a reasonable amount of. Oh, well, I Amber definitely feel. Like we're, yeah, I feel that yeah, part's fine yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I'm curious I, more well, about I the fact. That. I I say that we only know that a hero is going to cost eight thousand six hundred amber. Well, wow. thirteen. Okay, yeah. all right. I'm sorry. All right. 13, so whatever it's going to yeah. cost for thirteen, it's all right. Like so it's good. ten thousand three hundred and thirty yes. or something. So yeah, we'll just call it eleven. Ten thousand three hundred twenty amber for you know the week one amber cross, right? So that's what's going to be really. Uh, I feel like it's good for that, but that's all we know at that uh, right now. Like I don't know what else amber is going to be used for, so I don't know if we feel like we're going to have. That's enough. the question. The answer right. is more stuff. I honestly I don't know if that's going to be covered in robbie's video or not i hope but so if, if it's if it's not then then we'll we'll definitely cover it uh in the near future we're, we're working on other stuff right now i don't have anything for you guys yet but yeah. definitely the intent so, is for, yeah. for more stuff down the line i mean it's just amber was supposed right to be the replacement of the token system right or am i tripping uh amber's replacement of the hero unlock system or at least it, i mean that and more but like at was... first at a first pass it's a replacement of the hero unlock system Okay, I was about to say because I like I, I got the amber and I was like bet bro I can't wait to use amber to unlock my affinity Just because yeah, you know, it's like they told us it's like hey, we're not giving you the token system We're giving you the amber now that that free-to-play currency or whatever that you can use for multiple purposes, but uh Why I, I don't I, I don't understand why it didn't apply that part Because it just wasn't ready. Uh, we built it. Yeah. We built a whole new back end and while doing that built a whole new currency system and the most important thing for us was to make sure that folks could ac get access to Argus really quickly. So the focus was like, okay, we need to make sure that hero acquisition uh, being changed is the thing that we do first, because that's the thing that people care about most. And then, you know, you'll accrue Amber and then down the line, you'll have stuff to spend it on. But the thing you would miss out on is being able to play Argus on day one if we didn't have 
you know, the Amber system in place. And that was, that was really important to us. The but it's way the, I it's understood something it is still from... planned down the road though. I, yes. is what I, I want to run and clear it for people. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. The way I understood it from our partner conversations with some of the devs is that it is, uh, this is a, the first iteration of the free currency to make sure that it's working properly. And then once it's working yeah. properly and all the bugs are ironed out, then it'll, then they're going to implement another thing that it can be used for and basically just uh, put more and more responsibility on it. And once it can handle the responsibility, you know, it'll have true power because we know that true power comes true responsibility. All right. Anyways. So, uh, that was a store update. Dread on this. Okay. Okay. The bundle for, for Argus, the Dreadlord Argus bundle. My biggest gripe about this is I don't give two shits about the icon. I don't give two shits about the banner. I, uh, the skin, I, I hate the skin because the skin shortens the beard, right? I want the full beard <laughs> that Argus has. I don't want this short beard that you can hardly see that's covered by a mask. I want the full fucking beard. Give me everything. So that bothers me in that, but I love how the skin changes uh, colors of everything. But I want the spray. I don't want to spend $25 for a spray because I don't want anything else with it. I don't care about anything else with it. Let me buy just this. You should, everything should be individualized in the bundle. You could buy it individually or you could buy the bundle at a cheaper price. That's I was going to say, if you paid bundling, more right? for the spray, would you, yes. you sell? More, more as in what is like, let, what, like let's say the spray but, alone, but a spray price. Yeah, like the spray, spray alone is worth three hundred. But if you bought right. it in the bundle, realistically, you only pay like one fifty for it or something like that. Right. Yes. Yes. That's what you. That's what a bundle to me should be. Like you can get this stuff individually. It's limited time only. Get it while you can. And then once you, if you don't get it, you should. It's like hey, you should. You had to be there to get it type thing. I want the spray because one, it's a, it's a guy with a beard. It's a guy that drinks beer, you know, like I, I'm, it's all, it's got beer in it. It's got beard. Like it's, it's literally me. Like I want this spray and I can't get it. Cause I got to spend $25 that I'm not spending $25 and I'm sorry. It, you know, they said, speak with my wallet. Well, I'm speaking with my wallet, but that spray, I'm telling you, I would, you would have gotten money from me if you would have gave me the option to spend money on it. That, that's really good feedback. I don't know how much of that is set up and how much of that is technical limitations. Cause we haven't. <laughs> built a store offer on the new back end uh yet but that's that's certainly good feedback that that we can talk about uh i mean our, our goal is to make sure that you can get the stuff that you want i, I would bet there were just some limitations in how we were able to set up this this initial offer and, and our goal is to make sure that we're providing you the stuff that you want in ways that that you're able to to get it down the line that makes complete sense because with the Christmas bundles we had, with the old back end you guys had, you you had the ability to buy everything individually if you wanted to, and every time you bought it individually, the bundle price dropped. So that was something I, 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 I commended you guys for. It was a great job because it's like, obviously, like if I bought Fang Mao, all right, well, now that I bought Fang Mao, I don't want to go, I, I, I'm going to be spending more money if I bought the pun bundle at full price. No, it, it gives you that discounted price to it since you've already spent on the other actual hero whatever but so yeah so that's probably what it is but give me that ability and, and fix it before the spray goes away so i can buy it that's all i'm saying just it's a really it, good just, spray by the way just um, toss just that on your know. account for him <laughs> well i mean you could do that too but i there's other people i'm not the only one who wants this all right so i'm, I'm telling you there's other other bearded gamers that want this as well so but anyways, uh, the skin though, the skin is great. I do, besides the beard being shortened, like literally that's the, my biggest gripe of the skin. Other than that, I do like how everything changes colors. Uh, the, 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 uh, his E, it's like a black rock that glows red. You know, all of his beams are red and all that stuff. Everything, it's, it's great. I love how that, what is this? Is this, we can, you consider this a tier four skin in that situation? No, what's Okay, what's, how's that work? I, I, tier three? Yeah. I thought I thought tier four was when things everything changed colors, but I guess I could be wrong. Uh, so well, yeah, like the I character like model tier... changes. Yeah, character they model have, changes. Have, right. I thought that was tier five. They haven't officially okay. like no. They have. I'm, I'm, out yet. I'm basing this off other games. I'm sorry. I, I know. No, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. They could do but... their tiering system differently, but I would they call could. this tier three. Okay. Either way, it's a nice tier three skin. Um, speaking I think of great skin, the best skin in the game. Okay, no, wait, which one? Which one? Argus the uh, the Dreadlord Argus. Argus. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say that that Quench one that they threw in there was kind of pretty spicy, I, bro. That, the carbon fiber and gold one, and yeah. 
with the red accents and shit it's a good one bro I, I was just gonna say that one that skin's looking pretty good for a crunch skin oh it looks great but it's not better than argus the vfx <laughs> alone makes it the best skin Agreed. in the game the then VFX we got alone. the double agent twin blast skin it got put into the game um has anybody played with it windu have you got this one have you played with one yet? yeah no it's great. i mean i'll be i'll be real right with you back. I, I use that skin so much when I played Fault back in the day, because yeah. because they you know because it's an epic asset. And he never wants to see it again. I'm to the point where I was like, yo, I I don't even play Crunch, and I want the Crunch skin to be real with you, because okay. it looks cool. But I as far as a standalone because... skin and the 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 Twin Blast coat one is pretty cool. Yeah, it, I'm just wondering I because like I'm wondering how the, the 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 what's it red in the back. The dragon gets highlighted red with his pastor oh, on the back. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. I will say though, I almost bought it because I had like okay. eight eight hundred platinum still kind of laying around, and I was like, if it's a good price, I'll get it. But <laughs> it was twelve hundred, and I'm like, yeah, not doing it, not doing it. Yeah. Sorry. I, I'm only asking because I've seen with some of the other skins on, on Omeda that Omeda's team has been doing, and it's something they just need to work on. And not, that's like just a more feedback in the sense that some of their capes or their uh, stuff that flows, it, it kind of gets caught up. Even with with Argus, Argus is a little cape he's got, like it, the sides yeah. fold over and they, they sit physics. like that as, as you're running back. So like the physics, yeah, the physics don't like allow the the cape to flop back to where it needs to be like it gets caught up and it sticks and then it's like you uh, sometimes when you jump it's like you hit you can kind of fix it maybe or whatever or if you do jump that's what causes the issue um, this cape feels great so i was just wondering how the the coat on the twin blast how that was looking in that situation mm -hmm. uh every time he True. rolls it rolls with him okay oh yeah. you got it i have every skin in the game brother i don't I'm not the person to ask about skin prices. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I need you to buy me a lotto ticket. All right. Um, this is the one that I think is the most controversial topic, at least in my community. And I'm interested in what you guys have with it. The explosive flowers in the jungle. What is everybody's thoughts on what we got with these explosive flowers? Pins, I'm going to start with you because you're over there shaking your head like crazy. I think anyone that thinks this is controversial is an idiot. I, oh, I think this okay. is, I, anyone, cause I know what, I know what you motherfuckers are gonna say who think this is controversial is, well, if you give blast flowers on the map, it takes away from the characters who have mobility in their kits. The map I don't is give too a small. fuck, bro. It's a vertical game. And you know why they can't add shit that like is vertical? It's because people can't interact with it. Now you can interact with it. Okay. There you go. There you go. This yeah. is the best change in the patch. Yeah, that's hands down the best change in this entire thing. Um, I mean, the only thing you can gripe about is it might not visually please you, but at the same Bro, time, they're ugly as shit, but I love out. it. The yes. only yeah. gripe is that they make the Fey ultimate noise when they go off. I flashed yeah. away from one. <laughs> I, someone hit it, I flashed. There was a Fey in the game, and it scared the fuck out of me. I think that's yeah. a skill issue more than anything. But yeah, you yeah, could yeah. call it a skill <laughs> issue, but it, like they obviously just recycled that noise, which is kind of funny, but it scared me. It scared Bro. me. Yeah. Honestly, Me. I love it. I love that it adds verticality to everybody, quite frankly, yep. right? And it adds more verticality yep. to the game in general. I absolutely hate the way that they fucking look. This little pea yeah. pod looking thing that's there. And that yep. could have been a red flower in the red jungle and a blue flower in the blue jungle or something. You know what I mean? Like kind of kind of kind of play with it a little bit, you know? Like you could have thrown some pizzazz in there. But that shit looks like something that if I don't water it properly, it's going to die in an hour. Like I'm like <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm just I agree with you. That. I agree with you. Aesthetically, it is not the most pleasing thing, but the yeah. what it's it also does. Not the final version of it, aesthetically, too. Oh, say less. Oh, say oh, good well. to hear. <laughs> say, Great say to hear. No. That's why we have Jay Strides here, guys. All right, you can leave now, Jay. Thanks for taking time. Don't have to talk not not about math making. Nah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. No, 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 no,
and when do you and me we had a game and uh, i was jungle and you saw me hit one to chase somebody down and i was able to you know made a little spice with the play you know it, it was really cool to be able to you know close ground on that right one of the arguments i heard from somebody was the fact that if you're on an objective either fang tooth or prime then the whole team can gather around that flower and then launch themselves onto the pit Never and, you know and then just attack you i'm like okay but the strategy then is for you when you go and ward for those objectives then you take the flowers out just they did a two and a half minute cooldown also time. i i tried to do that with the team uh, everybody in goes game, in different directions bro. Just, it's just, <laughs> that shit does not <laughs> happen as smooth as you think so bro. like we sent our carry in there alone and the other four people jumped <laughs> off to the side and they just got oh, man. yeah oh well, see that's there's there you know so that's countered as well but either way like i said as you're going to ward for, you you want to ward around as you're prepping for the objective while you're warding around it you just take it out it takes a two it's two and a half minute cooldown they're not gonna they're, by the time it comes back up you should have had the objective by that time yeah and plus you kind of want only your you want your only your jungler to really use it you want your front lines to be able to come around on the other side and like kind of put pressure on their back line while your jungler is going to be able to freely jump into the pit i mean if you really want to talk about like on a different scale like i mean there's you don't want everybody jumping from one direction it's kind of like any other objective you don't want to go all one direction because right now you're just trapped there so it's super uh, the other argument okay. yeah. the other argument i had and is the 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 one that makes the most sense to me is for mid laners mid laners have a harder time now getting river buffs because it, like they have that, mm -hmm. that one flower right there by the two camp um, talking about a jungler them, coming over the wall into the yeah, river junglers buff. junglers are able to own the river buffs pretty well now because of that um uh, if if the mid laners not on their toes and minding their p's and q's a little more um so that was the only argument I, I could see with that but i mean i as the as a juggler myself i i love these not necessarily for the fact that i'm able to get river buffs i just love the you know playing chimera you hit the one that's up that the, it's able to launch you up by the your own uh t2 you hit that one and you're like the, jumping down and you're able to q onto your uh five camp you know like that's just like it just feels really cool to be that high in the air and all of a sudden come down with a key which bam like, all right and then just start swinging like crazy and, like, and if anything it imbalances the river camps equally because like your yeah. red side camp becomes safer now because mm -hmm. your, jung the your jungle camp, can so... do the exact same thing yeah right, exactly yeah right. yeah Yep. So it's no, actually it should be there. simpler in a way because you should be going to your right river every time every because time. that's your safest bet. So that's kind of null and voided skill issue. Like I, I guess that it, it's the only one that makes the most sense to me, but I'm not saying I agree. I 100 agree with. Trust that, me, I've that. been farmed by junglers coming over the two camp, bro. Skill issue. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I I love it. Uh, I love the the strategy it allows you to play there. Like it, it's great, you know. So between that and the jungle minion changes of like how you can kind of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for kite, kite the minions kite. over. You know, you can you can bring them over and kind of get things set up a little bit better for a wave clear. Uh, I I noticed that really only kind of affects you like early game, late game. Once you're like you get a little bit more uh, of a build cast, on, like, you're you're killing things pretty quick already. So you're not like you're not kiting. It can that still save you a couple seconds. Yeah. Like, if, if yeah. you can if you can take down the whole camp in before it's reset time, then you could just slap it and start running basically right away and kill it on the way to your. Next what camp. I don't it like a couple about the kiting and that it this needs to get looked at and fixed is they randomly stop I, I don't know if if the minions are out of shape and they just lose breath and they like every time they got to stop for a second catch their breath and then start chasing you again but they literally just about every time running, they attack they stop it's not even when they attack it's like because no. uh, bad news bears posted a clip in our in, our, in the partner uh chat and he's like literally it's just like the red buff is like it was like not even attacking just running and then all of a sudden just kind of stops for some reason and then he starts running it again it only yeah. happens whenever you're dropping off a ledge. So whenever it's like different terrain that they added to like try and overcome, it's when it kind of not necessarily Gets breaks, so they end up doing it. It just takes like a, <coughs> like a quarter of a second to like kind of think about what it's doing. And that is what's really the problem. Cause for the rest, like if you actually kite the red buff down the stairs, instead of jumping off, it actually doesn't get stuck. You could actually bring it out, but you get out of the circle, which means less time to be able to clear it. So it's it's more about like understanding how the AI works currently. Obviously, it's not like the best with it, but there's a way to make sure it doesn't get stuck when you're clearing. Definitely takes some getting used to the kite, bro. Yeah, because like as, yeah. as being used to the normal jungle 
all this whole time and now having that in there i almost felt like i had to relearn how to jungle with each individual character you know what i'm saying like like a shimbi might be able to actually initiate the camp a little bit easier and get him to walk out and then you take damage as you walk him back in or something like that but like a chimera it's like i almost have the idea of i want to sit here and smack it but now i'm like okay wait a minute let me actually try and backpedal here and get like wrapping my head my head around that especially game one i was like i know i'm fucking this up bro <laughs> i know i am so after i think it's level five you can actually clear two camps at once with kai um i think depends on items you build obviously but um if you have enough damage you can actually just start the five camp go over to the Q two camp jump on it quick with your rmb and then they'll both stack up and you kite them to the middle and you should be able to clear them before it goes back are the timers right, that forgiving quick. yeah they are <laughs> yeah they yeah, are they pretty are. forgiving uh <laughs> real quick before we go move on any further uh, i want to give chat time to uh post some questions uh so at myself windu pinzo or f6 uh in the chat at us and ask a question for matchmaking and we'll try to get into as many of them as we can uh for j shreds to be able to answer um so go ahead any questions you have about matchmaking about matches you've had or whatever uh go ahead and put those in the chat and add us and we'll do our best to get to those and then i'm gonna move on with what we got for the patch real quick um and then we can move on to there uh i, I was yeah. gonna say i'd love go to ahead. start with that one that i have pinned in there if you see that one up top uh i haven't seen it yet but i'll go back to it if you want to I'll yeah so uh, so skull 65 was mentioning uh is there any possibility that there could be an option toggle for those that prefer quicker matchmaking as opposed to a more balanced match because there's individuals that are waiting 10 20 minutes and they're like bro like it's killing so the fun that's, of the game that's more of an issue that we can and will correct than anything else like ideally we have our cake and eat it too we biased really far on the side of super fair matches out the gate and now we're trying to find the opportunities that we have so sneak preview tomorrow morning i believe it's scheduled for tomorrow morning i've got another matchmaking update that should cut matchmaking times by a Ooh. pretty considerable amount for most players like 30 40 percent for most players and take a very 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 small hit to the like top to bottom range um for player mmr in a match mm. so that should already help the ones that are getting super crazy long times that's really just a bug we've we've detected some cases where some players are being assigned zero mmr for some reason <laughs> um obviously that's not supposed to that's happen me, our, <laughs> right our, our system doesn't go down to zero right our mmrs are between 900 and 2300 right now um we've we've found a bunch of cases that that's happened so thank you for everyone in the community that has flagged those we're already working on a fix for that stuff and that should hopefully come too and that should address most if not maybe hopefully all of those cases with the exception of super super high mmr players that are playing in parties that is a tough case to solve because of the parameters that we set up for matchmaking, which was that we wanted to have really strict limits on the absolute <laughs> widest that you could go in your range. So before we were having cases where like a master's player would just show up in a gold game because the master's player had been waiting for 10 minutes and the matchmaker's like, let's just put them anywhere, right? And Or vice versa, right? You could have like a bronze player end up in a master's game. Um, that's obviously not good. And that was the first thing that we focused on fixing was let's set really strict boundaries for like the widest that you're ever going to go. The problem is for the players that are way off the end of the bell curve that are like three, four standard deviations from the middle, your, your nefs and, and your empties and whatever. Um, for those players, because of the super strict range, depending on the time that you're queuing uh, and depending on how big your party is, there might just not be enough players that are in your bracket to be able to play and we got to work on some other uh stuff for them i told empty i was like son i feel sorry for you but i appreciate you taking that hit for the rest of us my dude <laughs> i mean we, we want because i'm, to get I'm, matches, get, I'm right? getting diamond matches no problem but i'm so sorry bro i'm so sorry empty That's my dude just, yeah. we're, we're we're working on some stuff for them there, there's a bunch of really cool ideas that our team has where we can change the expansion rate as a function of how far away you are from the average and a bunch of like really mathy stuff that most people probably don't care about except that we're going to make matchmaking times faster it's not going to be a big hit to quality but the one thing everyone kept saying uh, and we wanted to kind of put this to the test was like you know give us longer matchmaking times as long as you give us better matches thankfully we validated that the better matches are happening which is awesome and i can talk about some stats in a little bit 
but the matchmaking times are longer than we want them on average and we're definitely that's our top priority right now um and hopefully take a pretty big step tomorrow morning yeah All i right. mean it's pretty hard for you to like like yeah you, you guys want that higher matchmaking but the player base is not not even necessarily there yet to even really guarantee that right especially with so many like smaller like increase like a lot of the higher playing players play at like certain times when most of those times are like at like a dull when players are not really well, playing I, I think much. we mentioned i think i mentioned this in the first matchmaking blog and, and i'm still working on the second matchmaking blog is coming soon tm probably we just needed to make sure the release this week went well and then i'll sit down and write the write the second one but the yeah. population and this doesn't matter like maybe we have a hundred times as many players in in a year or two or whatever right um, this will still be true and it doesn't matter which game the population from the lowest point of a day to the highest point of a day across almost any game is going to vary by like 10 or 20 times and if you look at the lowest point in a week to the highest point in a week like a I don't know 4 a.m. on a Tuesday morning against like peak hours on a Saturday um, you're talking a difference of like 30x or 40x um, from like total population size. So trying to design a matchmaker that works for absolutely every size is always going to be hard. One of the mm -hmm. things that we're doing on that front is we're trying to work on uh, dynamic adjustments so that the system can detect how many players are in queue and then make changes on the fly to how strict or how loose it's going to be so that you have looser matchmaking at like 3 a.m., but you've got much tighter matchmaking at like 6 p.m. or whatever in a given region. And that we could just kind of set those configs and not have to worry about adjusting them. And the system will automatically make trade-offs for, for queue time and quality as we go. So we're working on that stuff. That's part of the stuff that part of the reason that we moved to the new back end is like we've already pushed four or five matchmaking changes in the last two days in the 45 or 48 hours or so or whatever that we've been out um and we're going to continue to pump out changes and we're going to continue to be able to test and iterate on things at a rate that we just could not do on the old back end we just we didn't have the capability because we didn't own the systems and now that we do the power that we have you can change anything to, whenever you want we can change whatever we want whenever we want or mostly whenever we want i could talk about the downtimes uh, a little bit too that's another <laughs> thing that we're going to be working on but anyway i got a lot of i got a lot of stuff to talk about uh you know so sure. before we go to, that, to, to get us before going. we get back into that though I, let me let me finish because the next up is matchmaking so we'll get right to that and the back end right so um the the next thing we have is item descriptions the the change the bullet points uh what are your guys thoughts on that you, is that a thumbs up from everybody uh, or you know, don't really care or what do we got going Wait. on i i personally enjoy it i think it looks cleaner it, it, it puts out exactly what you want out of the item uh, so I enjoy it. Oh, um, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you talking about for a second? Uh, I'll be the real. Colors. Yeah, I I like it. It's it's very caveman proof, quite frankly. The only party gets a little bit complex for people. Man like, is what he said, guys. Like, uh, <laughs> like people would literally look at it and be like, so if it's blue, 2.5% with a little mana icon next to it. Does that just mean I'm getting 2.5% extra power in total? And I'm like, no, 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 bro, no. Like, yeah, uh, pred players can't read. Like the like, I, the icons read, with the colors, good, that has confused a, a few people in there. But I, I like there it are a couple of there are a couple of item descriptions that aren't quite correct, uh, which I which I put into the creator Discord. Appreciate some you. of them made it made it past QA a little bit, but um, other than that, no, they look really good. They look very nice. It doesn't yeah, change colors my day. Are always easier. Does. It doesn't change my ahead. day either, F6, but I think for like someone who's trying to figure out what it means when Stormbreaker says do zap damage and you get to like see what kind of like how much like how that damage is being dealt, like I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Like yeah, I already I mean, know, you know, but I didn't know for the longest time how much Stormbreaker scaled up. Um, yeah, that's supposed to say that that's a lot. Kind of stuff, that's the kind of stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm adding myself a little bit, but like, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that we wanted to do. Is we just want to make it a little bit more accessible. Obviously, this is not the final version of stuff, but I think this is a really big step to try and, uh, uh, you know, improve some of those cases where it said do extra damage in an area, and it's like, well, how much damage and how big is the area, right? So we're we're trying to trying to work on clarifying some of that stuff so that people can that aren't necessarily super experienced with an item can at least get a much better understanding of, of what they're picking up. 
All right. Um, I have not seen any questions that were adding me anyways. So, uh, well, the one question, it has nothing to do with matchmaking. And uh, we can get back to that later, though. That one question that did at me. Um, all right. Let's talk about uh, the match I had, Jay Shreds. Uh, the one that I was matched. Can up I talk with. a little bit about back end first? And like, sure. What, do what this all We're in the middle of an ad, by the way. Just worth throwing it out there for like another sexy second. What's up? Right. We're in the middle We're of a, a Twitch ad. ad right now. Yeah. So okay. we're just letting right, you know. Fine. 60 seconds. Um, do you guys like peanut butter? I'm I mean, so done uh, with them, chunky bro. Chunky or crunchy? <laughs> nah, uh, I don't think crunchy or smooth. <laughs> if, if you do chunky, crunchy, you gotta hear a serial killer, bro. If, you, if you're chunky, I mean, you do I like, a serial killer. I like I like the crunchy stuff anyway, mm. so like I don't think you, it's a choice. But you said that I knew what you meant, but yeah. then it, it wasn't until you fixed it that I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> My my wife is a smooth peanut butter person, so we always gotta buy two at the store every time, cause like we can't. I agree. mean, I feel like now nah, you just gotta throw it away, you know? It just is what it is. <laughs> Talk about the peanut butter, by the way. Like you just gotta like smooth over at this point, because I'm so, not buying two cans of peanut butter. Before we or go, jars, I should say. <laughs> before we go into the next subject here, so real quick, Lance was asking in the chat, why did we feel that a new matchmaking was needed? So maybe just to answer that question for individuals that have not been around for too long. So the 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 reason we needed a new matchmaker is the same reason that we needed a new backend, which is that on the old system we were using a third party provider, and that was super awesome for us because it meant with a, a really small team that we were able to run this game for the last fifteen months without having to hire you know sixty backend engineers to learn how to build a backend and then use a bunch of services. So. The good part of that was a lot of stuff just kind of came out of the box for us to be able to do logins and host servers and like have a matchmaker that made matches. The problem is when we start to look towards or when we started to look towards building our own custom stuff like the custom soft currency or and uh, you know a matchmaker that we can control changes on. We just couldn't do that because we didn't own the code. We had to go to the provider and say, hey, we've got an idea for a thing like do you have anything that will work for this or can we develop some custom code and give it to you? And sometimes they would say yes, like some of the matchmaking changes that we made over the summer. And sometimes they would say, no, don't, doesn't really fit with our stuff and we'd have to figure out some other way around it. And that was really slowing down our iteration cycle because we weren't able to work with, uh, you know, it's kind of like having a rental car, right? Like if you have a rental car, you can't just rip out the engine and put a new engine in. You gotta, you know, if you're leasing a car, you gotta, go to the company be like hey can i can i do this and they get to decide yes or no or like renting an apartment you want to change the countertops you got to hope that the landlord likes the countertops you picked out otherwise they're going to say no and you got to kind of stick with what you have when it comes to matchmaking specifically the really honest answer is the old matchmaker was not up to quality for the ranked mode i mean it wasn't up to quality for the casual matchmaking experience but it definitely wasn't up to par for the ranked mode that we're developing um when I don't, I don't have an answer for you honestly i like i genuinely don't have an answer I, i'm not actually sure when it will be fully ready working on it oh. is super high priority the team is making a whole lot of progress but one of the milestones that we had to hit is we had to ship a new matchmaker and we had to be comfortable with that and we had to feel that it could meet the quality bar that we wanted to set for casual matchmaking but especially for ranked matchmaking have and you guys this is like a kind of a far out question but have you considered <laughs> once you have ranked would you guys loosen the matchmaking on casual queue? Totally. I, okay. I'm not saying we definitely will, but like that's absolutely <clears throat> a thing to consider. Right now, we're kind of living in this pseudo zone where we only have the casual queue and we've got to yeah, make yeah, sure yeah. that the competitive players get their competitive mm. games and the casual players get their casual games. And that's why we're trying to do some weird stuff with like, you know, matchmaking is slightly different based on where your MMR is relative to the average. And we're trying to, to kind of meet everyone's requirements right now. We certainly have a lot more flexibility um, once we have a ranked mode to be able to be a little bit looser and just focus on speed and, and fun and whatnot in casuals and then have a much stricter experience in ranked. So that, that will definitely come uh, in time. But broadly speaking, as soon as we realized that we couldn't build a matchmaker that would support the ranked mode experience we wanted, that on top of not being able to build these other features that we wanted to build as quickly as possible, like custom ranked rewards and whatnot, um, we realized that we needed to build a new backend. And a backend for anyone that doesn't 
isn't familiar is basically if you're in the game and you press a button outside of an actual match so like you know forget forget an actual match of playing pred but anything else when you've got the game open if you press a button and it needs the internet that's back end so when you're logging in when you're matchmaking when you're trying to see your friends online and add your friends to the party when you're trying to make a purchase or get rewards after a match or look at your profile and adjust your your profile icons and skins and everything all of that stuff is back end that it, it just encompasses every single thing that uses the internet so we reached out to a company that provides a backend engine, kind of like Unreal Engine doesn't build games for you, but it gives you a bunch of tools to work with to be able to build games faster. We're like working with a backend engine company that essentially we bought the tools and then we spent the last five months uh, building it ourselves. We put the Lego pieces together and wrote everything over again from scratch um, from the ground up and now we own all the code we can make any change that we want whenever we want and it's totally within our our space to be able to build whatever we want in the future which is a monumental task I, this is probably you know anyone i've talked to in the industry has said that we we're crazy for attempting this um, and the team that we have that was able to pull this off with a very small group of people in a very short period of time, it's genuinely something that I don't know has ever been done in the industry to make a move like this with a live running game. So I'm ridiculously proud of the team for, for getting us here. But again, like you've seen us already deploy a couple things in the last couple of days, like we're already seeing the value of being able to iterate really quickly. Someone fixes a bug, puts it in, and we're able to just kind of ship it out to live and make things better really quickly. So I know you just explained how huge this was. I know a lot of people don't understand. Like they saw like, oh, we worked on the back end. Yay. Right. You're like you just explained like how huge it really was of like accomplishing that. Um, and I know you said you don't have a time frame for ranked, but like what does this essentially put the path of rank on? So like we know like you're waiting to like essentially figure out how to like make the matchmaking work in your guys favor what do you think is really any other roadblocks other than that to really set you guys up to go into ranked i mean now it's just a matter of making sure the matchmaker is performing exactly how we want it which as of right now it's not exactly there but again we've already made strides in the last two days we've got more stuff coming tomorrow and the next week and the week after and we'll be able to iterate relatively quickly beyond that it's actually building the new features that we can build now that we have the lego pieces to do that previously things like you know, uh, end of season ranked rewards that give you a reward based on your final, you know, conditional reward based on your, your final ranking. Like, you know, Rocket League does that at the end of their seasons. You get like diamond wheels if you are diamond or like bronze wheels if you are bronze. I'm not saying for sure that we're going to do that. I haven't talked to the design team about that, mm. but like those Definitely are the kinds happen. of things, right? <laughs> those, yeah, confirmed, right, obviously. But those are the kinds of things that we could not do on the old system and that we can at least explore whether they're interesting on the new system, right? Um, we can build whatever we want to build and don't have to ask permission from another company to build it, which is just going to make, we hope and think, um, our iteration speed on building complex new features so much faster. I like that. So real quick, uh, Pinzo, you got to bounce, right? I got to bounce. All right. <laughs> do your outro real quick. Let people know where they can find you. Just because uh, I know you got stuff that you got to do. I do. Um, I am Pinzo. I stream every day at 2 p.m. Eastern. I upload YouTube videos, uh, all that kind of stuff. I've been fighting the new matchmaking, not because it's like bad, but because I have good players in my game and uh, it's hard. When? So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I like the patch. It's pretty good um i definitely i appreciate you coming on j shreds i will watch the rest of this i'll watch it i'll comment on youtube see uh, see what all j shreds says that kind of thing um spicy if you leak something let me know i gotta know i'll, uh, I'll message you first i got you I, you, you be the first you, one thank you f6 um but uh yeah that's all for me so i appreciate you guys being here i appreciate you letting me bounce a little early so. all good Thanks for coming. I'll be back next next month's predcast. I'll be here. Don't worry. <laughs> next month, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably be there too. At this yeah, well, yeah, we, yeah. Got, we got Robbie's video. We're probably have to break down next week, guys. You know, because that's coming out tomorrow. So we got to yeah, yeah, break down the video. Hey man, Robbie's I'm, running I'm out around. of time I'm to show around. up this quarter, bro. That's all I'm saying. 
Uh, <laughs> no, we, we already talked to Robbie. That's we got. We had to reschedule. He's actually uh, mm. traveling. He, we had him scheduled for the fourteenth, but he's now <laughs> traveling that week. Uh, so uh, we have to reschedule. We're, we'll. I got to talk to him. We'll figure it out sometime in April. Okay. So it is happening. He does want to still sit down with us. It just has to get pushed back a little bit. So. Why is he? Uh. Yep. All yeah, right. He reached out to me. Guys later. To tell then. me that. Yep. Later, later bud. So yeah, huge shout out right, to so Robbie because now- he he reached out to me and hit that and, and said, hey, I got to make sure that we're good to go. Uh. So. I was so gonna say, to now that Pinzo's leaving. Yeah, now we can leave I got everybody. a question for Jay Shreds. Yo, so, I was gonna ask you, dang. Well, what I was gonna say is, so when you at least beforehand, before all these changes, the difference between Omerida City and the difference between all the internal MMR, the internal matchmaking, how everything got factored and et cetera, where is everything now in comparison? Because people still can only see Omerida City what expectations should they have looking at those numbers like what like you know what i'm saying like uh, like how, so, how much so can you broadly, share about the differences yeah so broadly speaking our mmr calculation has not changed yet it, it might we might decide to make some changes to it at some point but both the algorithm that we use and the algorithm that omeda city uses are pretty much the same after some amount of time and when i say pretty much the same i mean the way that they interact not necessarily like the actual dumper because like you take two coins they both have a 50 percent chance of hitting heads but if you flip them 10 times each you're not necessarily going to get exactly the same numbers right so there's there's going to be some variability for sure generally speaking from what i've seen players are seeing closer omega city matches too which yes. makes sense because even though you're not going to have exactly the same numbers, they're going to be kind of like valenced the same in one direction or another. So as we bring cl- players closer in actual MMR, the Omega City MMR should probably get closer too. Now, one of the challenges is still, and I was actually talking to the team today, we don't currently provide party information in our public API. That may be something that changes. We're talking about it right Come now. On, like the party modifier, um, for example. No, like whether or not someone was in the party. Okay. So the match that we'll talk about for Bearded, for instance, it was a Masters player playing with like two bronzes, a silver and a gold um, that he queued into. And ultimately, because the average of the party was right about where Bearded's level is, um, to him, it just looked like a completely random match because Omega City wasn't aware that it was a five stack. Don't make me sound as bad as that. It was it was a master, <laughs> two platinums, a bronze, and a silver. Okay, I wasn't. Okay, well, I, either way, it was a big it was a big distribution, right? No, there was uh, a bronze. Okay, yeah, yeah. But so there, there was, was a bronze. bronze. <laughs> there was, but it wasn't two bronzes, all right? I, I right. have higher I have higher MMR. Okay, believe me. G- generally speaking, for for the matches that I've reviewed in the last couple of days, where someone's like, "Oh, this still looks really wonky," it's because people were partied up, and we still want to make sure that we keep that in the casual mode. We're gonna mm-hmm. have much stricter requirements and ranked about relative rankings and like who you can queue How up far with, somebody can be when with. you party up with them. Right, we're definitely gonna have that for rank. For casual, we intentionally want to make sure that people play with their friends. Right, I'm like a low diamond player myself. I got a bunch of friends that range from bronze up through master. And I want to be able to play with all of them. Um, so that's that's something that we are still going to keep. And that will sometimes show up and look like an anomaly. 99 times out of 100, it's because they're they're all partied up together. Actually queued together. Uh, right. So on Omega City, people should see closer matches. If you see a weird match, check to see if they're friends. So you can, like, you know, look at their, like, you know, related players. But if something looks totally wonky, J Shreds on Twitter, or not Twitter, on Discord, J Shreds on Reddit, um, find me, send it to me. I We built a bunch of tools to be able to look at matches really quickly. I'm very happy to do that for anyone <clears throat> just to kind of validate that it's all working as expected. I do want to hit you with some stats, though, because these stats are actually kind of crazy. Real um, quick, just yes. to, uh, to back you up on the fact that we are seeing better matches, I've had two of my best, like, MM, average MMR from Omeda.City, my, uh, uh, between the two teams, I've had two of my best, like, the closest you can get since this new matchmaker. I had one that was 1.2 off from the uh, for the average MMR, and I had one that was 1.8 off. I was like, you besides being exactly right on, like I couldn't get much closer. I wouldn't expect. So right. the I I do agree with you that these matches are getting a lot closer. So so uh, I wrote the blog back in July, and there I included a graph, and we were looking at two different numbers. So the first number is what is the difference between the average of one team and the average of another. Basically, like, how much do we expect one team to beat the other? And our initial 
difference when we started working on matchmaking was a median difference of 80 MMR between the two teams, which was like a 55-45 chance of winning. We brought that down to 18, and which is pretty much a coin flip in our first iteration on average. That score of 18 MMR is now the worst 1% of matches, which means the worst 1% of matches right now are basically a coin flip. Um, we are not making matches anymore where one team is like way over favored to win on average. We can talk a little bit about like how much should you weight the highest player on the team versus the lower lowest player on the team and like averages are not perfect. But broadly speaking, it's making it's doing a great job of mixing players between teams. The other measure that we look at is what is the gap between the highest player or party in a match and the lowest player or party in a match. So like you got an 1800 in a match and a 1600 in a match that means that the spread is 200. The day before we launched the new matchmaker our median spread between the highest and lowest player was 200. That median spread as of this afternoon is 60. So we have cut down the gap between the highest player or party and the lowest player or party by more than two thirds to where we are today. And we're not done. We're not gonna stop working on it, but that's just like within one day going from the old system to the new system, we have brought the average parity based on the MMRs that are being fed into the system to levels way beyond anything that we have ever had and much, much closer to where we want to be. Now, is there... I don't want to ask this. Is, is there any detail that you can give us as far as like... Because you know how matchmaking oftentimes, um, depending on the game, sometimes it'll consider your KDA into the matchmaking. Sometimes it'll consider a win rate into your matchmaking. Sometimes it's literally just... Hey, this is my hot take. MMR. All that stuff is all that stuff is a dead end. A any game that's ever tried to do that, and there are a couple games that have tried to do that. Um, any game that tries to do that and modify MMR by like your KDA or your assist or whatever or your damage done, and gives you a different MMR score and tries to predict how well you're going to win or lose a match based on that modified score and compares it to the score that you would have gotten if you just include wins and losses. The wins and losses always win. Like it's just way it's the reason that it's used so much is because it's been validated time and time again. There are so many small things that a player can do to help their team win that trying as a human to say this is more important than that thing and we should weight this more than that thing is just impossible. Um, your ability to body block is never going to show up in any stat, but it separates a great you know tank or frontline player from a not great tank or frontline player. Like, some ADCs are really good at doing damage in a team fight and staying safe, and some ADCs are really good at shot calling and going for objectives. And there are just so many different ways that you can contribute to helping your team win that trying to decide what actually matters and then use that to modify your MMR is rarely going to work. It's a lot easier and better and more reliable to just say, did you win the game? If you did, you probably helped your team win. Or if you lost, you probably could have done more to help your team win. And that may not always be true. Maybe you go 30 and 0 and your whole team feeds and there's nothing you can do about that one game. But if you look at every game that you've ever played, then on average, it's going to be way more predictive of, of how strong a player you are than, than trying to guess at any stats. So is it fair right. to say that uh -oh. Omed is keeping it towards that basic side of win-loss? Not necessarily trying to look for, at these crazy right now, modifiers yes. like and stuff. Maybe we do some crazy machine learning stuff and like we just send our data person, like send them to a hut in Finland for a month and he codes up some wild thing that the industry has never <laughs> seen or something like that. But like for right now, we're going to stick with basic win loss. And then anytime we want to make a change to that, we're just going to validate it. We're just going to say like, how would this have changed this person's MMR? And then do we think they would have won or lost this game? And then how does their actual win-loss compare against the expected win-loss based on their MMR? Because MMR is all just math, right? It all just says this person's got this number and this person's got this number. So right. one of them is like 53% likely to win the match. So if you simulate it 100 times, then they should win 53 out of 100. And as long as that is lining up, then your MMR math is doing what it's supposed to do. So along Definitely. those lines, I agree with you that win loss is is the way to go in that situation. That just it makes more sense. But with the game, especially when there's been a lot of people talking about DCs and AFKs, uh, uh, <clears throat> the guy in the red hoodie. Um, yeah, anyway, it's a problem. Um, 
So, but with those, with those DC, I had a DC uh, in one of my match. My first uh, Tuesday, I, I I had a DC. It was one of my, it was like my second match. My crunch DC. He went against the Argus off lane, and he got upset. And he cried like a baby, and literally quit the match. But we ended up winning the game. <clears throat> so he benefits from that. Is there any way for you to in like see somebody that hey, if you either DC'd or you like literally did nothing, like I'm not saying you should like look at KDAs or whatever, but you literally did not because we also had the match I showed you. For I had the Argus that literally sat in base all game, didn't get didn't get a CS, for ranked, didn't do yes. anything. For rank, yes, because for rank MMR is actually a reward or whatever we use the you know right. T score or you know whatever thing we use for rank, right? For rank, yes, totally. We want to make sure that we've got some intelligence systems in place to keep bad actors from profiting from being bad actors in ranked. Absolutely. For casuals, I think I understand why because we like to see a number go up, and right now, Omega City is the only public ranking system that people have. I understand right. why people think that MMR up is good and MMR down is bad and that it's like a reward system. But strictly speaking, it's just supposed to be a number that is a mathematical approximation. And like it going up or down is not necessarily supposed to be a reward or punishment for casual. Now, when it comes to punishing AFKs, I think that's totally separate from matchmaking. Right. Matchmaking, we want matchmaking to do the best job of picking the 10 best MMRs to create a fair and balanced game. And there's a bunch of stuff that we want to do, like make it so that uh, we're not just balancing MMR in a match, but also like within a lane. So like we try and find like a 1600 MMR ADC and a 1600 MMR ADC. So they're on both sides, like a bunch of stuff down the line. When it comes to AFK detection and like toxicity detection and actioning, we can and will be more strict than we have been. What we have been focused on, especially right now, is making sure that the back end is stable and that the new patch is stable. Um, and then we can start to crank up the severity. We also are working um, on some better detection, um, which we'll implement at some point to catch players who aren't contributing but aren't like didn't totally walk away from their keyboard. I know we know that that's an empty area right now in our vision, short of relying on player reports. Um, that's going to get improved uh, over time. We really, you know, frankly, when someone leaves the game, it ruins the experience for everyone. And we certainly know that. But at the same time, internet happens, life happens, power outages happen, right? We've all had cases where our power goes out in the middle of a game and we feel so bad for our team, but there's just nothing we can do because we don't have power. We want to make sure that our punishment has some allowances for real life happening, but is really catching the serial offenders and applying much sharper penalties to them. Not to be a broken record when it comes to saying new backend is magic, but one of the things that we couldn't do in the old back end was, um, you know, certainly we had those stacking penalties for repeat offenses and then every so often they would get wiped, but we didn't have the ability to say through the lifetime of this account, how often has this person been reported or how often has this person been detected? Okay, make their penalties go up faster, right? Because we can see that they've got a long history of doing this. So even though their temporary penalty threshold is low, we should be on high alert for this person the same way that we activate more intelligent chat detection for the um, chat toxicity AI. That's something we want to do. Haven't started working on that transparently yet, um, but it's one of the features that something like the new backend allows us to be able to build, to be smarter about that detection and not just look at how many incidents have you had in the last two weeks and then have a system that automatically ramps. Uh, like All that. right. Sure. Before we go on with the more match, because I, I I see that we're on matchmaking right now, and I still want to have I have more back end questions I want to ask before we, because I think matchmaking is going to be the bulk of our our conversation. So I want to ask these now and get them out of the way. Um, with the new back end, um, does this well first the the old back end was a third party? Or is mm -hmm. that third party now completely done? You guys are doing it all yourselves now, or are they like kind of helping you along the way? The, like how's that, that working? We we are no longer working with that third party company now. The provider 
of the backend engine that we're using, we're also paying to help with some like quick response. But it would be kind of the same thing as like relying on Ep going to Epic Games when you have an Unreal question or like right. going to Unity when you have a Unity question. They build the engines, so we can ask for features to be built into the <clears throat> engine the same way that you can ask Epic to build a feature okay. into UE5 okay. point whatever. Um, but if we just want to do it ourselves, we can just do it ourselves. We just we have all of the source code available to us, and we can just go in there and do it. Okay. And now with this new backend, are we able to? Are, are, are you? So are we? Are you guys able to uh, work on like optimization of the maps? Uh, so like uh, people who are running on like for me myself, I run a twenty seventy super, right? Like, but like optimizing for different GPUs to where you can run at a higher FPS rate. You know, like you, and then you can also have the epic settings on and see the actual beauty of the map instead of having running so on lower settings. The back end doesn't affect that stuff because the back end is more things like matchmaking and purchasing and logins and penalties and rewards and all that stuff. That being said, that is currently a focus of ours. We just released the FSR uh, Fidelity Super Resolution. Yeah, or high that, fidelity, whatever, that was the sneaky whatever, whatever little add-on that you guys threw in there for the super sampling on it's AMD. A, I love yeah, it, it's bro. A, Sneaky, but pretty pretty important one. Um, so I'm a 4K that's, gamer, that's bro. First, that shit made a difference. I'll tell you what. It, that's that's the first step in that direction. Um, other steps in that direction. I mean, we're we're talking to Nvidia about DLSS and DLSS three and FSR three. Those will probably come down the line. Okay. Um, Nvidia's also got their Reflex technology, which is like a mouse input latency adjustment thing that we might consider. Um, and then when it comes to beautification of the map, there is some stuff that is coming soon ish. I don't know an exact date, so I can't give you an exact date, but we are right. working on some changes to um, how the map is visualized and rendered. So what lunar um, cycle are we talking at least? Like, where, where I, you, I, I, I genuinely cycle? don't, like, I genuinely like, don't like, know. Give me, give me right? something. Are we talking about like when summer comes, solstice? When, or when we it talking comes about? to this tech stuff, right, when it comes to major tech changes like that, right, there's the idea phase, and then there's the, like, test some samples phase, and then there's iteration and testing and bug fixing and all that. So I'm not sure exactly when, but we are certainly always working on visual improvements behind the scenes and we have some more significant ones coming this year that i think should should push us further in that direction okay because i have been noticed oh, the reason right. i asked that and i know you said the back end doesn't really kind of control that but the reason i asked that uh before version 15 i've been noticing lag spikes and even with like even with version 15 i'm still getting some lag spikes here and there and it does cause like to be an issue for the game, and I'm just wondering if the optimization is is going so to fix lag up with spikes, that. Or what? So lag spikes. When when someone says lag spikes, or when you're saying lag spikes, is really usually one of two things. So the first is a frame drop. So like your whole screen freezes, or like you know your FPS dips, and that's usually a client performance issue. That's how well your computer or your console is is running the game. And that's the kind of stuff where rendering optimizations and changes to, uh, you know, our, the game client that actually is sitting on your machine come. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is packet loss. That's things like rubber banding or, yes. you know, delayed responses. So some of, some of that stuff can be improved, but we're really using the top of the line Unreal Engine 5 networking code. Um, so we're, we're just using Unreal's networking code plus some additional things like the projectile uh, prediction that we added a couple patches ago. Ultimately, we are a little bit at the whim of the internet. Um, depending on how far away you are, depending on the load on your ISP or which ISP you have, or if you're playing on Wi-Fi, what your Wi-Fi router is, how packets are handled and reordered on your Wi-Fi router, some of that stuff is out of our control. When you go through matchmaking and then end up on a match, we basically give you the internet version of a phone number. And we say, hey, 10 people, go internet call this number. It's a data center in Virginia or California or Frankfurt or Singapore, whatever. And then your game calls directly to AWS, which is where we host our servers. And then your connection doesn't run through us at all. It's not like you're routing through our services and then back to 
the server, you're sending all of your information just back and forth between you and AWS. So at that point, beyond improvements to the actual like performance of the server and the performance of the game client, if you're getting intermittent hitches and stuff, that's stuff that we have a lot of trouble controlling for. Always going to try and investigate things if there are opportunities for us to make things better or Unreal Engine comes out with newer tech to help with this, we'll absolutely integrate it. But we are, our hands are more tied than we would like them to be when it comes to how people's internets talk to the Amazon data centers. Okay. I know no. we've been talking about... Go ahead, go ahead, F6. I know we've been talking a lot about the back end, essentially working on that aspect and stuff. Um, how does that implement and change towards the updates? Because I know a lot of people hate Want this that for three, six weeks right so so what i will say is it unlocks some more speed on things oh no they're on ads you can't say it. <laughs> i mean you can still say it just go on youtube and watch it after right oh uh, sure you're right you're right you're right, I, you're right, you're right. I, I think this is an important answer so i'll save the important bit i'll see if i can give you some other stuff for 60 seconds and then save the important bit for uh do you yeah. put honey on your peanut butter and jelly sandwich though no no it's just peanut what butter and jelly although what fuck? i do what i do is sometimes i'll toast the bread like if you have, uh -huh. if y'all never had a, a, a toast oh, so good pbj is great yeah, man. That's, that's, that's so good. good that's, that's the way different. to go it's yeah, weird though great nah that honey <laughs> shit's weird though <laughs> what do you so, mean you never had peanut butter honey no I, 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 um I, honey's too sweet for me uh in most cases uh so all right, where are we? Hey, uh, I, how was I gonna say I, this? Um, back end. I was gonna ask a back end question here. No, I lost it. All right. Okay, that's okay. I do want to answer F 6s question when he when he comes back and when we're right. But we still got twelve seconds to add. And I was um, gonna add. What was? I can't think of it now. I literally had it in my head. All right, we're done with the ad, by the way. Cool. All right. So let me let me uh, answer F 6s question and hopefully while he's yeah, gone. He's Perfect. So while he's gone and hopefully he's still got his headphones what he gets on but at the very <laughs> least I'll, I'll i'll answer the question i'll answer the question for everyone um the four week or six week cycle or i guess the two week or three week cycle is for a couple of different reasons um one of the shift which from is, three to four yeah so, okay, so our, okay. our shift our shift from doing a small patch every Every, other week and three, a big patch every four weeks yeah, to doing it at three and six. A couple yeah. different reasons. Two to four, three, um, six. Seven. So it, it's important also to say none of this has changed how many hours we work in a day. None of this has changed how much work gets done in a day. It's not like we suddenly decided to go down to a 30 hour work week or like a 20 hour work week or something to compensate for that. Like we're still working the same amount. We're just bundling stuff a little bit more. One of the things that changed and that drove that patch cycle is that now we are running on console. We're running on one console now. We've talked about Xbox in the future. At some point, we'll be running on two consoles or more if you count versions of, of consoles. Dang, coming every to Switch, time, that's crazy. Every no. time you need to make... I <laughs> Look, I, I don't... Maybe Switch 2 at some point. Switch 1 I, I, is not, is not happening. I, Box I developed Grux a game, coming you know, back, confirmed, coming yeah, to Switch. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just a bunch of boxes. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, one, of the, one of the challenges that you face when you're running on console is console certification for a patch each time and prep for a patch each time, which means that you lose one or two or two and a half days of development time. There's each. like a whole approval process. There's, a, there's an approval process, right? Okay. You need to submit your build to get approved, and then it has to be checked and approved. And there are some faster processes, right? But then it also has to be scheduled for the next day, and you got to go through a couple rounds of stuff, and like maybe there's an issue, and you have to adjust it. So if you are guaranteed to, let's just say, lose an average of two days every patch because you're going through the patch certification process, you can lose two days every two weeks, or you can lose two days every three weeks. And when you start to like look at how much time you're losing over a long period of time, patching yeah. at that faster rate, it, it the lost days add up. So you actually end up getting less stuff done because you have less working days in each cycle before you have to close things off and ship it off. When we were running on PC, like we could make changes up to the morning of when we were gonna release and rebuild it and ship it that day. And that just doesn't work on consoles. Right, so we need to set a much harder cutoff time um, for what we're doing, and then shift towards post-launch support. That's one of the big reasons that we shifted. Now, the back end does mean that we will see efficiencies in other areas, and hopefully that translates to getting more stuff done. 
the trade-off then is going to be still, you know, getting more stuff done per patch or getting more patches per unit time. I, I personally think, I mean, 15 was a pretty big patch. Uh, soft currency, brand new back end, jungle minion changes, item reworks, uh, third yeah. custom character. Like, there was a lot of stuff in V15. Um, if we can continue to put a lot of stuff in each patch, then that at least the most important thing to to me is that we're continuing to work at the same pace and pump out stuff at the same pace eventually we've been public about wanting to move back to a two week four week cycle we just have to do that at a time where it's smart and it makes sense and not just because right it doesn't make sense for us to go faster just because if it'll ultimately slow down the rate that we're actually getting stuff done and, and pushing it out but it'll be better for your podcast guys so we can actually keep on putting content you know on what? consistently and not instead of once a month. Oof. The last the last three minutes of what I said, throw that out the window. We're going to two week, four week just so that we can do the podcast. There we go. Right, you got me. There we go. All right. I knew so, what was so I, got, I got a question, uh, kind of like what uh, F6 just actually mentioned, the whole console thing. So is it because of console and PC combo that a major patch like that took the whole game down for such a long period or is no, that to be that's expected a, that's something more? that it's the back end um that's something i wanted to talk about too thank you for priming me for that um so we had all of everyone's account data all of the purchases you've ever made and your account levels and your mmr and all of that stuff sitting on a database and we got all these giant number of accounts that all have their own information and purchases wallets all that stuff and we had to move that from the old one to the new one so it's like moving house, right? You've got to pack up all the boxes and you got to move them somewhere else and then you got to unpack and then you got to make sure it all works. We needed okay. 24 hours or 26 hours or whatever it was like that. to literally do that process, to literally take all of the old data from one place, pull it out of that old place, rebuild it in our new database, and then check it because it was really, really important that we get it right. Because if, you know, if you paid $20 for currency and then we lost that in the move we can't just say oh it fell off the back of the moving truck that's too bad like we we would need to correct that and and do lots of like you know investigations that take a lot of a, a lot of time so purely that was just moving back ends spinning the old stuff down spinning the new stuff up making sure the accounts work making sure the migration work correctly QA testing to make sure that it's all operating as expected and then we came back up on Tuesday now, when it comes to the short back or short downtimes that we've had, I think we've had two short downtimes so far. I think we'll need another one tomorrow morning for the matchmaking changes. We <coughs> could roll without taking those short downtimes, but then it would kill matches that were in progress, and that's not good. The reason we take an hour of downtime is because that's about the amount of time it takes for every live running match to finish to make sure that we're not killing anyone's live matches. Because man, if I'm playing a 65 minute close match and it's been back and forth and we've saved our core and the enemy has saved their core and then all of a sudden the server just dies, like that sucks. And we think it's bro, probably 65 better. minutes, you got done a favor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, think, we think it's probably better to be upfront and say, hey, you're not gonna be able to get in a match for the next hour go make yourself a sandwich, go touch grass, take your dog for a walk, right? Um, oh, and then grass, come Jesus. back. Uh, Damn, bro. Targeting at but, six. But then come back so like we're, so that we're being as transparent as possible and letting people know so that they can make a choice and they can come back in an hour. We're working with that new backend engine company um, to have them help uh, either make a change to the engine or help us um, make the changes because again we can make changes ourselves now to allow in progress matches to roll over to a new version of the back end while the match is still in progress I don't have an ETA for that but like we had a bunch of conversations with them today we're talking internally they're talking on their side so the goal is for us to be able to do no downtime deployments as soon as possible and it's the highest priority ask that we have of the new back end engine company to to help us develop or to develop themselves and roll out as a new feature so with this new back end and, and everything being crossed over already we you don't foresee another downtime of 49 years i hope not <laughs> not intentionally <laughs> uh, all right, all right. It, it literally i mean the process was it was literally just Love like, you, Kari. 
go and go and through an account <laughs> check the account move the account over go through an account check the account move the move the account over but right. when you're rinsing and repeating by like a huge number of accounts even with computers that are working way faster than than a human ever could it's just a huge amount of data that you got to check and double check and triple check to make sure that we didn't lose anyone's currency we didn't lose anyone's purchases we didn't lose I think you guys forgot my my uh my Argus spray when you were crossing everything. Oh, oh yeah, you're, you know what? God. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, we, we will still have for the foreseeable future when we need to make a significant back end change, like some of the matchmaking changes that we're making. We will still probably do that one hour downtime because we don't want to interrupt people's live matches. And again, we'd rather be transparent and let people make a choice as to whether they wait for an hour or come back in a little bit later. Um, but we're hoping to be able to make that change as soon as possible, hopefully within, I don't know, the next couple weeks or so, or, or ideally sooner, but but I don't know for sure, so that we can just keep, leave the game up and, and keep it running forever and, and make changes to the back end to our heart's content. That's awesome to hear. I mean, I do have a question, though. When it comes to, like, implementing a little bit more towards uh for the players and like a quality of life kind of aspect mm -hmm. uh for instance like the season three pass was only noticeable through the roadmap right or like you had to yep. go to the website to like look at it is there like a way they're going to be able to put that in a different tab going towards like the in-game screen that way we could be like oh sweet i'm here let me just keep going i know it's not like a totally. traditional and let us pass. know before the end Totally. Yes. So, and totally. okay. yes. Season, and they season had rewards. one already, though. They had one yeah. already. The holiday rewards. They did. They did. Mm -hmm. yes. They had that tracker, and they, they they need to implement that on the season rewards for uh, for everything now. I, I, I don't that. know the final version that the season rewards are going to take, but that idea is absolutely coming, right? We want people to be able to see what's coming, know what's coming, so that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's nice when I hit level four and eight and whatever and just got a huge amount of amber just thrown into my, my amber wallet, but. It, it will be it it will be good for us to be able to provide some more visibility around what's coming and and what people can expect and prepare for that that's totally coming we just need to do the work and and get that out and is there like a difference between like different types of dc so we know like hey you might have like lost power or you just completely exited a game is there like a way you guys can tell through your systems currently with the new back end or Not, is that something you guys are so, working on so here's part of the problem and there are games, and I, I won't name them because I don't want to get it wrong, but I'm sure all of y'all, if you've spent time on the internet, have heard of live games that have been in hot water because their uh, detection systems are a little too invasive on a PC, right? They are asking for too many permissions. Installing into my motherboard, bro. The, the, <laughs> the, the line we want to walk is we want to make sure that we're not uh, asking for permissions to things that we shouldn't be because we don't need and when it comes to stuff like that like the difference between an alt f4 the difference between a uh you know someone pulling the plug on their internet or turning off their computer or whatever that can be pretty difficult for us to see what we mm -hmm. can hopefully do and i say hopefully because we haven't specced it out and this is just me kind of like top of the dome is crash reports might be the one exception to that so submitting a, if your game crashes and you submit a game crash report, um, sure would be neat to be able to do a lookup of all of the recent crash reports, get the account ID and say, oh, make sure that we don't give this person an AFK penalty because they crashed, right? Mm -hmm. That the, Those are the kinds of things that we can do without being too invasive because that's just data that's someone is opting into sending when they send a crash report. Um, but when it comes to detecting an alt F4 versus a, you know, control alt delete versus a, you know, turn off your computer and walk away or, you know, turn off your PlayStation, that that can be a lot more difficult to detect um, hmm. and then action. Can you guys at least get like at least a parameter of like, hey, we saw you press escape, go to leave game. Maybe, kind of but thing. then we're then we're doing key logging, and then and then okay. you know it. it yeah, I, I don't want to say I don't want to say no for sure because I'm sure there are intelligent ways that other games have figured out. But uh, it, it's a difficult problem, and there's not like an obvious solution that everyone in the industry uses, um, at least yet. Um, if that changes, we'll totally <laughs> be on board because our goals are not to punish people for things outside their control. Our 
goal is to punish the folks that are clearly and maliciously doing something wrong. And that's what we're trying to balance when it comes to, you know, the the reporting and actioning on the reports. One thing while I'm talking about reports, too, that uh, hasn't been a question yet, but I think is important to address. We are working, actively working on a system to provide feedback when someone you've reported has been uh, suspended. Thank uh, God. <laughs> Yes. Huge. The, the one yeah. of the biggest, transparently, one of the biggest problems we have, it's not that we're not suspending players, but like if you see someone AFK in your match and then we suspend them for seven days and then you don't run into that person for seven days and then you see them seven days later and they AFK again, as far as you're concerned, nothing has happened to them because you don't see the part where they were suspended. And most people are not dumb up. enough to go on twitter and reddit and discord and say like oh i just got banned you know what some some people are still dumb enough to do that but like <laughs> most aren't so the problem we have is we're kind of banning these people and suspending these people in silence and that doesn't provide you any feedback to know that what your reports are actually working your reports do work they all go to a system that aggregates them we can see by player how often they've been reported for what how recently they've been reported you know uh reliability scores of the reporter so it actually like judges how good you are at reporting oh, people gosh. so <laughs> if you report a whole ton then you're probably going to have a low reliability see score. score but like if you never report better people, than my credit score yeah <laughs> if you and all your friends never report people and then all of you report the same person all at once that's probably a good indicator that they probably did something bad because it's not like you're throwing wild reports out anyway we're working with the chat provider company to help add some layers of data analysis on top of that to help add some uh you know the ability to be able to say okay we've suspended this player do a lookup for all the players that have reported them and then make sure that we send them a notification. We are actively working on that. I know everyone's tired of hearing soon, but not yet, but soon, but hey, not yet. Hey, right? I mean, but that's kind of what we brought you on here for is to kind, to kind of uh, help us understand what is kind of happening because besides the last time we had you on, you know, all we knew was a matchmaker, was, a new matchmaker was coming. Well, now it's here. Now you get to explain some of that. And then you could, you know, you're, you're giving us a little bit more information on uh, some other stuff going on forward. So we the, definitely the same, greatly appreciate the same, that. The same super awesome folks that have been building a whole new game backend for a live game while it was running and being developed over five months, which again, genuinely unprecedented in the industry. Like it's, it's impossible for me to overstate what an accomplishment this is for everyone writing a brand new matchmaker all, all the work that the team has done now that the match or now that the back end is out now we can start to turn towards okay now that it exists and it's running and it's doing the stuff that we need how can we retask those people to use all the things that they've learned about how this thing works in the last five months to build all of these awesome tools all this awesome automatic stuff that we've been thinking about but just couldn't build under the own system uh, under the old system because we just didn't have the, the control to on the old back end we could not send out report notifications to players that said hey someone you reported has been banned because there just wasn't a feedback loop that we could build into that we can do that now we're going to do that now it's coming um and we just have to to sit down and actually develop it so i should stop reporting people for being bad players I mean, yes, you should stop reporting people. <laughs> no. And that is that is another thing too. That while I'm while I've got a chance to to be on a soapbox, matchmaking is the process of putting people with certain MMRs in games. Matchmaking is not the process of guaranteeing that that person is going to go ten and zero. Um, right? If if these problems were solved, sports leagues wouldn't exist. Like gambling wouldn't exist. Humans are humans, True. right? You never know exactly how they're going to perform. They could be a great player in nine games in a row and then totally feed in your game. That doesn't mean that they're bad. It doesn't mean that they're worse than you. It just means that they had a bad game or that the play styles didn't mesh because they're too aggressive and you're too passive or, or vice versa or whatever, right? People are always going to struggle to, to, to perform in some games. Please stop posting pictures of people that go, you know, are clearly struggling on Reddit and uh, whatnot. It's not helpful. If they're bad actors, report them, flag them to me, shoot me Discord messages. We'll make sure that they get handled. But like, pe people have bad games. Uh, you don't want people calling you out for your bad games uh, when they happen because they happen for all of us. You know, let's just try and be a little nicer, especially to the newer players and the players that are maybe on the, the, the lower to medium end of the MMR spectrum, shall we say. 
Well, speaking of having bad games, I've I've had a few bad games, uh, mm -hmm. and I've had people I've had people report right. I've had people report before it, so I'm glad that I'm glad that there's a report tracker. Like, so say, all right, hey, you actually aren't that good of a reporter because like this person just had a bad game. It's it's not like they're actually throwing. We watch Bearded play all the time. He's always throwing. So what are we gonna do about it? You can't. He's just that bad. You yeah, know? I, I I mean, <clears throat> right. Well, so one of my best games recently, I went like. 0 and 12 on Richter, but I was just like running the map. I was completely dominating the map, but I had almost no assist because I was dying right off the, the bat, but I was dying in the middle of like a four person Richter ult or something like that. Like my stats look terrible. Running and yeah, I went 0 and 12. <laughs> running it down is what he's on. <laughs> running it down. I was totally, I was totally running it down. Actually, there was a great post, I think, by Sock Cap on, on the Reddit talking about this. Sometimes. Sometimes your death bounty is an asset. Uh, if you've if you've died a bunch of times in a row, dying another time is not worth a whole lot of gold to the enemy team. You could totally use that to your advantage, especially if you're like an off laner or support. Like Send sometimes it. just go ham because they're not going to get much out of you. And if you can totally influence a team fight for the rest of your team that's doing better, like that's actually a favorable trade economically. Gonna run it down. True. Say less. Run it Tomorrow down. Tomorrow we if, start. J Shreds 2024. If you're behind, keep running it down and run keep it down hard. It, it down. I say less. I got the approval. We're gonna see a random 0 and 24 Grux in the solo trying his hardest to run it down. Right. Like God. So going going back to my match, we didn't really actually talk about it. You referenced it. But my match where I had it was me. Let me pull it back up real quick. Let me see what we got here. All right, right. It was way. you and a four stack against a five uh, yeah, stack. I yeah, I barely I was in a, I solo queue. That's all I know. I jumped in this match solo queue and I'm playing this game and when I'm playing this game, this mid laner, I can just tell this mid laner is out of my league by the way he's playing. All right, I'm like this, I'm like something's going on here, I can just tell. Goes off, I'm like, all right, this we end up forfeiting because the way the game was playing, like this, there's there's no way we do it. I get to a meta city and I see I'm going against a plat one, a bronze three, a master one, a plat one, and a silver two. My team is gold one, gold one, gold two, gold one, gold three. And I'm like, how, why am I solo queuing and I'm going into a master one? That like to me that just doesn't like. I and I so after talking to you, finding out that they're a five stack. All right. You just happen that, to be the one guy that got it, screwed. <laughs> And, and it's and like, yeah, are, like, are you okay with me revealing your actual that? MMR? Because like I the don't numbers, give a shit. okay, cool. Shit like so, actual, so I went to look, not Omega yeah. City. Uh, actual numbers. So I oh. went to look it up, and just to give you an idea of how close the matchmaker thought the match was, mm. which obviously it wasn't a close match in reality, and we'll and we'll talk about s some of the challenges. But I think this is interesting context. Beards, yeah. uh, Bearded's MMR is fourteen seventy six. He was matched with a four stack that had an average MMR of fourteen sixty nine. And he was going against an enemy five stack that had an average of 1469. So like by the math of the MMRs, the it biggest difference, out. the total balance in the game by party was like a, a max diff from highest to lowest of five, right? We're talking about the average being of high low diff being like 200 on the old system. Like it was so balanced according to what the matchmaker had to work with. Now the challenge is, and some of the Beard and I were talking about this a little bit um, this afternoon, how do you compensate for one player that's just so much better than everyone else, right? And that is a challenge that we haven't solved yet, but we want to solve. We know that LeBron James can't win against five NBA players. LeBron James probably can't win against five college players. LeBron James can totally win a game against five elementary schoolers. Right, where is where is the line at which one person can totally dominate a game regardless of uh, you know how many people they're facing on the other side? And the answer to that is we just have to do just so much math to figure that out that we haven't done yet. Uh, but it is a problem and it's a challenge that we need to solve because the game that Bearded got in reality was not a fair game, even though every metric we have to measure it says even that the numbers it was fair. Up. Yeah, right. because I look at it. So this is good. I, I can only use a meta city because I don't have your information that you have in front of you, right? I look at meta city. I look at I got uh, a, a master and two plats, and the rest of my team's gold. So three of their players are already above my team. 
so they already have the app they're, they're all they have to do is win though those three people win their lane and it's just like all right now they're able to to uh roll right oh you know, had somebody uh, that, low that low on that lobby bro they, there was a bronze and a silver in that lobby beyond their team but it's like and they were but they were five stacks so they can carry them you know even easier they're literally boosting their, their these low level players in the sense like what's going on so i got screwed because my whole my whole lobby is gold right gold one gold two and gold three that's whatever how it was according apparent to emeta city and i look at that it's like these three people are already ranked above my whole team as it is it's not like i have somebody in my team to help counter that like i don't uh, nobody counters them in, in any way and that's where it's like how do you like even if like it'd be different if my team had the master and like all right we're trying to battle these plats but it's like there's like there was no level like I, it, to me it doesn't level out I, like from what i'm seeing and then and the gameplay proved that i'm like i there's nothing i could do here the the problem is because we're intentionally not putting masters in like gold games we're not going to go out and find you a master because they have a master right because right. that's that's not good either and that's kind of what was happening in the old system not exactly but like um, you know the net result of what was happening in the old system was that so this is way this is basically solved in ranked already right because we're going to have rank restrictions so you're not going to be able to have those super widespread parties of bronze to master um, the challenge is how do we solve that in the casual queues because it's still something we need to solve and the answer is we've got to do a whole bunch of data modeling of you know, what is the gap between the highest player and the average of the lobby based on MMR? Because, like, you know, is a 1,500 in a lobby of 1,000s the same as a 2,000 in a lobby of 1,500s? Probably not. I honestly don't know which one's more or less imbalanced. But, like, it's not it's not an obvious scale where you can just say, take the highest person, subtract the average, and then make some sort of modification to that. Solving that problem is one of the super cool problems that I want to solve. It was actually... Fun fact, that was an interview question that I gave our analyst uh, when we ultimately hired uh, our data analyst is like, how would you approach solving that problem? So we've got a thousand ideas floating around in the back of our head. Ultimately, we just got to do all the math for it, come out with a, a result and then try and make a modification. But it's absolutely a blind spot that the current matchmaker has. It's a blind spot that most matchmakers have. I don't think other games compensate for this really well, or if they do, they haven't posted any papers or talks about how they're doing it. Um, but it's one that we really want to figure out. And when we do, maybe we'll do the talks and the papers and tell the rest of the industry, you know, uh, the, the other MOVAs how to handle it. it. It's something that we really want to uh, solve and that honestly will be a fun project. We just have to sit down and do it. All right. What about putting in a, uh, I guess if I'm solo queuing, right? Because uh, I'm not a guy that has friends. I, I'm a friendless guy, right? So I solo queue a lot. So if I go in like, it, I, I would be better off in this situation to be queued up with a bunch of solo queuers. With the player base being increased that it's at, what are the chances of, of, of like a separating stack queues? Like so the, stacks the problem can go is, against stacks and then queue, uh, solo queues go in solo queues or, or, or at most duos. That's basically, honestly, that's basically what happened in your game. Um, the challenge is when you have a four stack, by definition, the only way you can make a team is with a solo player. That's true. Right. But then they so what happened in your stacks. game is we had a five stack against a four stack. That's true. Plus right. you You're to right. balance it out. Um, we actually do bias to party sizes uh, now. That's one of the other things that we've added to the new matchmaker. That's a super cool feature. If you're in a large party, you are significantly more likely to go against another large party. Um, that's, that's one of the modifiers inherent to the system. We try and balance large parties of similar MMR against each other. That's ultimately that's what happened in your game, right? We had yeah. a we had a party of five that averaged fourteen sixty nine, and a party of four that averaged fourteen sixty eight point five, and we took your fourteen seventy six individually, put you with the four stack, and said, "Go have fun, you're you're good." Yeah. So the, I was supposed to carry just, that. I was supposed to carry that four stack. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you were numbers. seven. Like, hey, you were seven I whole need you MMR. To carry these guys. Uh, you were right. seven, seven whole MMR ahead of them. I don't know why you couldn't just uh, do yeah, it. Yeah, I could own, just man. pull them along with me. Hey, come on, guys, we got this. You better. Um, all sorry. right. Yeah. No, it's it just it's just rough because like I know it's casual queue, but like it's still my time, right? Yep. I sat down. It's like I played the game, and it's like all right. Then I like once that game was so far into it, I'm like all right. There's nothing we can do. I I tried, I did my best to set up everybody that I could set up as a jungler. And then it's like, there's nothing we can do here. And then it's the, like, the, all right. And at that time, queues were taking a little bit longer. I, not to the point where I'm like sitting there. I, I, 
I played fault when queues were freaking crazy long for no matter it didn't matter who you were like so I I can sit through a queue time I'm not worried about that I'm not sitting through empty queue time so I I, I empathize <laughs> with them but like I mean I can sit through a queue time so I'm not worried about the queues being longer I did notice they are longer but it, it just like man it's like I only have so much time I play four days a week and I only have like four hours between those four days to play and it's that, like that was just a waste of my time and it just that, that's the challenge and I know cause... you understand that yeah oh oh for sure and and i totally agree that like that's that's not a good game from a fairness perspective from a systems perspective that was that was like flawless execution of the system right it took right. a five stack and a four stack they were half an mmr point uh and then found one other person that was really really close to fill that and then put you all in a match that on paper by the party averages was golden it's right. just that the party is not being adjusted based on the highest player in the match and we don't want to just add an arbitrary value to that because right. then you end up imbalancing things in ways you didn't expect we kind of need to approach this the same way that we approach the party size mmr modifier which is let's look at the actual data let's do a bunch of math and let's draw a curve and then figure out a way to fit that curve into an mmr adjustment that'll just be something that we just need to do with time that we need to sit down and and uh you know, do the so analysis for. I've been telling my community and tell me if I'm wrong, but you guys, this is your first iteration of your new matchmaker. And I've been telling my community that like, I get that matches when we first jumped in Tuesdays and Wednesdays matches, they're just kind of rough and, and, but they are getting better. Um, you guys, I've been telling you guys are just, we, we, you guys are collecting data points and with the data points, you are making adjustments to the matchmaker as needed to make it better for us as a community. Yep. Um, is that true? Is that wrong? What yeah. We... I mean, we've, again, we've shipped four matchmaking changes already, and we have a pretty significant <laughs> matchmaking change going out tomorrow that Perfect. should cut queue times on average. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to have the fix for the weird zero MMR bug that's affecting some mm. sorry, Pinzo. Um, players. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, Pinzo, right? Um, <laughs> But that one is coming. That one's being worked on at high, <coughs> high frequency. I just don't. I don't think that's done by tonight okay. and by tomorrow morning when we want to ship it. I don't think that will be ready. But um, we are uh, making some adjustments. We're we're looking at everything, right? We've got huge. We got tons of dashboards. We're looking at data by region and by MMR and by all these different ways that we try and measure how good it matches. Um, and then we're constantly simulating and adjusting. Uh, when we set out to or set down to figure out what our final matchmaking shipping configuration was going to be the final tally for simulations before this ever went live was more than a million simulated matches and 300 different sets of configurations for the matchmaker and we picked the best one out of all of those um, obviously you know like anything you know developing a race car you never know what's going to happen until you actually put it out on track that's why we've been making these adjustments we didn't see the zero mmr bug coming because our data didn't expect there to be a zero mmr bug so there's still stuff that we've we didn't see coming but that we're responding to very quickly um but the amount of work that went into this and the effort that went into this and the ultimate quality of the core matchmaker is we are so happy with where it is right now at its foundation and then once we start to make a couple of these tweaks over the next coming days and then over the, the coming weeks, I, I'm really, really confident that this is a thing that we can build around to, to really have a best in class matchmaker for casual and then for ranked. Um, Which speaking of, because whenever I, you were talking about the whole bearded situation, all I heard is ranked will solve my problems because a diamond can't queue with a bronze, right? Yep. So yep. I'm not going to ask you rank when, but- Kendra already did. I was gonna say I'm not yeah. gonna ask you rank wing, but how much closer to rank are we? Uh, way closer than we were on Monday before the new matchmaker shipped. I'll tell you that. Uh, I, so I like, mean it. Like, considering the, it's been good results, it definitely has. Oh, very sped very positive up. results. Oh, it's it's absolutely accelerated the pace of ranked. And again, it, it I don't know when the final date is gonna be. I'm not a you know I'm not involved in in the game production how about this question that, but how about this question for ranked are you guys wanting to do ranked before full release or are you trying to get ranked with full release that depends on when full release happens i, I okay. don't know you know that's mm. I, I didn't so know close, if you guys are trying to so tie close. together yeah no no that, that that literally wasn't fishing because i don't know if like if they literally because i personally what i would want them to do i want them to put ranked out before full release i want them to 
to get everything tested because this is early access it's the best time for them to test everything and get it ran and and get all bugs broken out before you go for release i would rather them do that than go for release with brink They're like okay well we're having issues sorry for everybody who just came all you new people this is the issue we're having i'd rather have all what, that what i can out. tell you is i mean y'all have seen how good some of the players we have internally are when they show up in the pcc Ooh. like uh, how dare you not mention import like yeah. that how dare she. ray and import and julie and all them anyway um we are all players too right we're all a lot of us are competitive players i i'm a i'm a diamond player on omeda city and i'm like the 12th best person just in our company um right we've got a lot of really competitive players that are waiting for ranked two um we absolutely it is a very very high priority for us rank two on there it. wasn't a ranked one <laughs> Got him. Uh, right. um, also, it, it's it's a very high priority for us. We are absolutely working on getting it as soon as we uh, think that it's ready to be released. There's some other stuff we you know we we gotta we gotta finish. We gotta make sure that the new matchmaker is exactly what we want it to be. We gotta do some rank specific testing on the matchmaker now that we're starting to get comfortable with it in the casual queue. Like there, there are more steps to be done. So, uh, you know, it's not like it's coming out next week or anything, but making big progress in this week was a massive, massive step forward in that effort. Okay. Uh, I mean, number so, 12 is very specific. I do want to ask more. I was, but... I was just guessing. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm like number eight, but like blood Mortius, oh, Import, so just went Julie, up. <laughs> Ray, uh, purple Swan. Um, okay. Like, uh, I'm just, I'm trying to run down the list. Oh, Shin, uh, <laughs> you know, that's already like six or seven players that are like top two, 300. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to tie these two together. So now that we got console and matchmaker, does this mean that you guys can focus more on features and quality of life in the next coming months? Yes. Something similar to, and then you can talk about more specifically on this as well. Uh, because, uh, but role queue and like character trading and draft so character trading and draft is something that i think needs to be ready for ranked i think that's one of the requirements that we have internally for rank that will be worked on for the ranked mode and when that's ready i would assume that would come to casual as well it's less important in casual because you kind of select your role as you go um, right, you select in that pre-draft phase, and that mostly alleviates things, except for the last-minute swaps where you want to make, where you're like, oh, actually, I changed my mind because, you know, I was gonna play steel, and then the support picks steel, and now I need to pick someone else. Can I juggle instead? Like, we still want to facilitate that, and the jungle hunt item can make that a little difficult. It's it's coming. We need it for ranked at the very least. Um, what, what was the other question? Oh, roll well, queue. No. Yeah, <laughs> roll queue. Well, so this is gonna be my moment to to kind of soapbox on a. Th- thing is if i haven't done that take it away i hate i hate roll queue um okay i it is i I don't hate it 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 is so restrictive so when it comes to matchmaking you essentially have this budget that you can work with between how long a player is willing to wait in queue before they give up and the things that you want to do to make their match experience better so the really obvious one is like how quickly do you expand their mmr search range versus how long they're waiting in queue that's the the obvious one and that eats up some amount of budget you could also do things like try and preferentially put parties of the same size together which we're doing now that eats up some more of the budget because you're adding another layer of what the system is trying to look for things like hey try and put you in the same match as your friends that are queued up at the same time even if you're not in a party together so like you know, you see your buds and you're like, oh, I didn't know you were on. Oh, I didn't know you were on and all that stuff, right? Those are all good things that all eat up some amount of budget. When it comes to roll queue, roll queue eats up so much of that matchmaking budget that it makes it very difficult to have the space, if you will, really the queue time, to work on any of these other changes. The problem with roll queue is roll queue is only as fast as the slowest roll gets filled. You could have four roles that that could be making matches every like five seconds, but if no one wants to play support or jungle or offlane or whatever, you are only making matches as fast as you get players in that slowest role, which means your overall matchmaking time is brought down by a ton right from the outset. Then you say, okay, well, why don't you add fill and, and well, fill incentives? Well, Overwatch also solves that by giving an incentive 
yep. to pick them, but they the don't role. solve it. That's the thing. Overwatch has way more disconnections, and they've talked about this a little bit in, in some talks here and there. They have more disconnections because of that fill thing. What people want when you incentivize a fill roll is they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want a fill roll that also gets them their primary roll because then they get the bonus rewards for still playing the role nah. that they wanted. Well, now it wouldn't do the same with the fill roll, but it, like it, it's a for like, like tank. Like I, I yeah. think it's tank in, in Overwatch. Well, that, well right? let's say like so if you MOBA really terms. Just tank, right? Yeah. So yeah, like all right, let, let's MOBA terms, right? You know, nobody same... play. Nobody wants to play support, right? So nobody wants to play support. So in this case, predecessor, if you, if support, you pick support, we're gonna give you an extra three hundred amber just by picking support. Yeah, then you're gonna have a lot of people play like you know full damage. Murdoch support because they just want the 300 amber yeah we get that already anyway I mean yeah you kind of do get that already right and then you say okay well then you punish people more and then you add more punishments for playing out of role but what's the line between off meta and trolling it's a very thin line that people dance all over all the time um, it's not to say that these problems can't be solved but the real question is is it worth it is trying to solve the slowest roll, slowing down everything, worth one, the extra effort involved in trying to deal with all the system and emergent toxicity from it, and two, spending that budget on some of the other things I talked about, like queuing into your friends, or maybe looking at matches that uh, with players you've won with before. So even if they're not your friends, if, you know, Bearded, if you and I didn't know each other, but we've appeared in four games together and we won all four of them, and I queue into you again, like, then we're more likely to become friends. Or at the very least, we clearly have play styles that complement each other. And, you know, you're my support and I'm your ADC and we just love playing together. Um, right? There, there's stuff yeah, we just like that, best that friends? we can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, calm down. Right. <laughs> uh, so I do roll have a question, Q, though. Roll Q, ultimately, here, I'm just going to finish this thought real quick. Ultimately, our goal with the pre-draft system is to solve a lot of those problems out the gate. Yep you may be slightly reduced relative to roll queue in your odds of getting your first choice, but the odds of you getting your last choice are a lot lower than it is in roll queue because you can kind of move people around and people can move around dynamically rather than having to do all this like currency arbitrage trading of like, you give me mid and I'll give you ADC and then I'll turn around with that mid and trade the mid for solo. And then solo is going to trade for jungle and like, that stuff gets complicated and it ultimately ends up at the same or a worse result than the quick trading you have now. All right, now go F6. No, no not worries. yet F6, because so, I'm still on that point. Uh, sorry. I'm on that I point. Did, I did ask the what question you... wrong. I did ask the question wrong, and I at one point uh, that it's my fault you're on that soapbox. Uh, it, it was actually about role. It was asked about role trading. Uh, so I did say that. So uh, role trading and character trading, uh, yes. because especially in Pred, it's needed for role trading because of the jungle. Uh, you, you're yep. locked to smite. It's so needed for ranked. We're going to do it. All right, got you. Now go F6. All right, so you you did highlight the fact of having like roll queue of like not getting your your least favorite, I guess mm -hmm. would say, uh, roll. Um, but I know in Smite, they have a kind of, you choose your top two roles. Um, is that something that could be able to be there? Cause it's kind of your top two roles. And then after a certain period of time, or sorry, you guys get in the match anyways it doesn't matter what the matchmaking says whatever your role is but if you're not in the top mmr you don't get your role is that something you guys are looking at so so what i will say is anything is possible right. um i i don't want to say my personal rant aside i don't want to say no to roll queue but we need to carefully evaluate what is the gain that we think we get for ultimate match quality and like player satisfaction against what else could we do with the same amount of matchmaking time? The issue with Smite's roll queue is again, Smite's roll queue improves your odds of getting your first two rolls, but then the other three rolls are rolled randomly. If you don't get your first two rolls, you have a random chance of getting the other three, which means you've got just as good a chance of getting your third favorite as you do of getting your least favorite roll. And if you get randomly rolled into your least favorite role, you're just kind of stuck there. And in the current pre-swap system we have, you know, again, people people have an opportunity to chat to each other and say like, hey, I really don't like playing mid. Um, can anyone take mid from me? And then someone jumps into mid and you can jump into another role. And that, ha I mean, we all see that happen all the time, or hopefully we see it 
happen. I see it in my games a lot, right? And ultimately, people may not end up with their first pick all the time. They can always try and coin flip for their first pick, which basically is the same coin flip that you're taking with the smite system, because uh, you don't know whether you're going to get one of those first two things. You can always 50-50 it with someone. Or you can say, okay, I wanted ADC, but mid is open right now. I like mid too. Yeah, I'll go take mid. No big deal. Hmm. Right. And then kind of self sort and self select yourself. Okay. I like that. I what do you want to hit that last one? Uh, talking about the one that Skull just, just typed you, in. The one you just posted. The one, yeah. The one you just put in the, our little chat there. Yeah. So uh, Skull65 is in chat asking Will there be changes and improvements to the overall? ward and vision mechanics introducing the game genre standard like fog of war on mini maps for example or etc uh i mean fog of war does kind of exist on mini maps right because you just don't see someone unless you have line of sight yeah. uh, like i or guess like we could no add more of a indicator that... yeah yeah that's uh, yeah you could add we could we we probably could and i don't want to say should but like i think it's a cool idea as a player to be able to see the range of the ward and like the overlapping circles we want to make sure the mini map's not too busy so we'd have to it gotta already kind of balance, pretty busy right we got to kind of balance that um <clears throat> like the busyness um i know one of the things in this direction that people have asked for is uh vision of the health bars for uh major objectives via ward so like i could drop a ward over fangtooth wall and see its exact health that's something our design team has talked about it's a it's a super unhealthy mechanic when you have characters with really long range snipes like argus and murdoch and and whatnot it incentivizes sitting back picking those characters and then just trying to snipe it every time the way that those pits are designed is designed to be a risk reward thing so the advantage that you get as the attacking team is that you can see the health bar of the objective the disadvantage is that you are all fish in a barrel Right, And the advantage that you get as the engaging team is that the enemy are all fish in a barrel, but you don't get to see the health of the uh, objective until you're actually in there. It, it's something people have asked for. Ultimately, we're going with this design approach for now. Ultimately, maybe we change it in the future, but I personally think that that's probably a healthy approach. I agree with the health bar, healthy approach situation. Uh, I do think though, the fog of war would actually help uh, clean up the mini map in the sense that it'd be easier to read a lot like your item descriptions and how you kind of, uh, you, know, you, you you would be able to see where your wards are doing and what your wards are protecting or, or warding for you. Um, the only issue that you need, and it's still, it doesn't matter, it's gonna change. It's gonna be the same on every, if you put fog of war in and you take fog of war out, the only issue that the minimap to me has is when you have heroes overlapping each other, like to the there, point there are, that like you don't know who's there. Like I, I see one person, and like, no, there's actually four people on that spot. It's like there dang. are there are definitely changes coming to the minimap. That's for sure. Um, we uh, there are a lot of opportunities like the hero icons, maybe the fog of war circles. I, I haven't <laughs> seen that mentioned, but I'm also not involved in a lot of that stuff on a day to day basis. Like th there's a lot of stuff we want to do for clarity and ease of, of visual use, customizability down the line. Um, you know that I, I love that Smite allows you to drag and drop the map and make all sorts of changes. Yes, I'm playing on an ultra wide. You know when I use an ultra wide ratio, it, I I can't use an ultra wide ratio because then the mini map ends up far to the side and yeah, you know, it's hard to play with. So like there's there's a bunch of stuff to that to that end that we want to improve and clean up it's just balancing that against all the other priorities we have to to get out there like you know mini map customizability or ranked mode it's not exactly a one-to-one -one trade off but like you can see why we would be focused on one more than the other i mean i know it's not the full community because not, not everybody that plays this game is a streamer but having a customizable hud for as a streamer would be huge because then yep, you feel like all right creators. you know a content creator you know, being able yep. to do like all oh, right I'm with you. put my camera here because like right now it's like all right do I put my camera over the chat? But the chat can also be a, a chat engager, right? For a streamer, right? So if I cover chat, 
now my chat my stream chat can't see what's happening you know so that could be a, a whole engagement type thing it's like to it's totally like with it, that. There, so there's like, a lot of there's a lot of quality of life stuff like that that we're really <laughs> excited to do we just need to make sure that we're checking the big stuff off as we go and then every every time we have an opportunity we're continuously evaluating you know how long would this feature take and how many people will this take and when do we think we can get it done by and what other things do we have lined up um our, our producers do a, a pretty exceptional job of trying to balance all of those things and then the team leads who who help coordinate work for for their teams uh it is a very hard job to make sure that we're lining up content so that there's something new in every patch but also that we're getting the small stuff done and we're getting the big stuff done that will take many many patches at the same time and we're not just working on lots of small stuff that it's a, it's a tight balancing effort it's one that we're continuing to get better at as we go but that you know things like customizability and and uh, you know the, the little things that that really stand out absolutely on our internal plans, um, and and hopefully we'll see those at some point in the near future. All right, so we need to wrap this up because we're definitely well over our two-hour mark. Um, here's what I will do: I'm going to sit here and I'm going to ask you right in front of everybody. So depending on the questions that we get on the YouTube version and the comments we get in either DMs or whatever we get from people. Uh, we are going to have to one we didn't even finish the patch we, we didn't go over balances and stuff like that I, balance is a big issue with this patch that i have a lot of people have controversial calls with this so we need to talk next week anyways after the robbie uh video so we're going to do a video next week uh and talk about robbie anyways uh we'll go over the video that robbie does and plus to talk over the balance uh, of the hero balance that we had in this patch depending on what the questions we get on youtube video uh could we potentially maybe get you back next week as a guest uh next week and we can kind of go over some questions we get from there i gotta sleep I'm about to say, <laughs> hold, right. a, hold the guitar hostage bro it's been it's been a long it's been a long week how about this what, what i can't commit to is you know you know i love coming on here and, and talking with you guys i love talking as confidently as i can about the areas that i get a chance to interact with and then filling in the gaps for for whatever i can reasonably provide uh, i can't commit to next week for sure i'm there sure go. everyone's going to have lots of questions uh, but definitely reach out reach out to to carrie and and see if uh we can schedule someone i mean there might be some design questions and it would be great to get design or qa or, or whoever and uh you know if, if no one else is available and i'm up and on and and everyone's happy with it you know maybe, maybe i'll pop up soon but uh i think next week i probably need a little bit of time off sounds good that's fine I'll that's why i want to hoop it in. what was that i'll answer for jay shreds no worries there we go yeah, yeah. There say, go. worst comes to worst we could just ask him the questions and have the answers ready and we read them you know what we i mean can do that. that that was gonna be my next resort anyways i was gonna just say hey if you're available great if not no big deal we're good to go uh, I knew I put you on the spot there, but it is what it is. Oh, no, that's um, fine. I mean, you, you know, I've been here three times already. I will be here three times and more again. Like, I, I'm I'm always happy to come on here and chat about stuff. Uh, I'm happy to chat about stuff that's not matchmaking now and again. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I've got some insight into that area and certainly work with the folks on it. But, uh, you know, there's lots of other cool stuff that we can talk about. Maybe next time we roll definitely. out some big toxicity changes or something like that, we can we can set oh, something God, up. Oh, God, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the next time that happens, it, uh, F6 will no longer replay the game because it'll be banned. Uh, right, right. Yeah, 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 obviously. <laughs> and, and not just toxicity. I mean, you know, it, I'm I'm really lucky that I get to work with a lot of people in the company on a lot of cool things. Right. We've got a lot of really awesome stuff coming tomorrow. Not to be a huge tease, but, like, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff that Robbie's going to talk about. I'm sure you guys will have Can't questions. Wait. Filter them through, through Carrie. Robbie will probably be answer, able to answer most of them better than I could. But anything that that he can't and, and that community can't that I can help filter a reasonable answer for, they'll probably come to me and ask me and, and send it back to you guys. All good. All good. Well, greatly appreciate having you here. Uh, a huge shout out. Even Skull says in chat, tell Jay Shreds that chat love uh, still loves him as, as, as a guest. He's really killing it. All right. So greatly appreciate it. Uh, nice. I, I know that you 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 made this happen. Uh, you were we were talking about maybe doing it next week or whatever, you know. But you made it happen this week, so that was huge. Uh, really appreciate the effort you put forth for this. Um, means a lot. Uh, so Windu, uh, on to you to do our outros. How are you doing this? We're gonna do J Shreds F6 myself and then you, right? Yep. 
same All basically right. same order that we introduced ourselves in with the exclusion of pinzo just tell everybody a little bit about yourself what you're up to any content out there you know where can they follow you twitter etc and uh leave where end it with a little tidbit to the community if we could this time around just like a, a quick little hey from me to you this is this is my message to say to the devs Imagine, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> Be like, time we'll to air it, it out. <laughs> our, our our team is doing the farthest thing from Slack and all. They are really they are really working hard, and, and I think, uh, you know, my, my parting shot is probably I I really appreciate the community, uh, the amount of support that we've seen and that everyone has shown us through this entire journey so far. We've got some really great stuff coming. We're really excited about it. The team is working hard, and you know, continuing to set the bar higher and higher for ourselves. Part of why we're doing stuff like this giant back-end rework is because we want to set the quality bar higher and not just not just throw up our hands and say oh it's out of our control um you know we're, we're going to put in the work to to do the stuff that we think is important and you know unblock everything we need to but anyway thank you all for for having me on i've been jay shreds if you don't know what i do by now after the last two and a half hours <laughs> I, I don't know how to help you and uh you know I, I said it once and i'll say it again if you're way behind run it down you know, what are you going to lose? <laughs> Run it down. Oh, oh man. man. Last, see, last time, this now. is great. There's going to be a lot more reports now. I got to I gotta think about this for the future, because last time my sign-off was telling everyone to play Narvash Jungle, <laughs> and now I'm telling everyone to run it down if you're way behind. I... I got I got that so hard. You got chill out. Somebody, you got we're going to have to start editing these last 30 seconds, right? I countered that so hard. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. It's been real. I, I appreciate it, and I look forward to my uh, fifth time jacket. Uh, two visits yeah. from now. Spice. Oh, we'll send you a Slim Jim on the fifth time, for sure. Oh, <laughs> Go ahead, uh, F6. Well, I'm F6. Uh, it's definitely been a long one, but always fun with J Shreds. Uh, I mean, I guess run it down. But you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, any other socials. Probably I don't interact very well. I'm an old man at heart, so I don't even know what I'm doing on there. Uh... But uh, PCC coming April 6th and 7th, uh, we're going to be doing some casting over there. Uh, we have some exciting new stuff for you guys. Uh, so just kind of be ready for that. Uh, I'm also over here on Predcast, obviously, uh, whenever we do it once a month, like Panzo said. Uh, and uh, yeah, my advice for the community, uh, stop leaving my matches. Uh, that's, that's all I got. That's this week's uh, anger moment. Uh, stop leaving my matches or just sitting there fk please i promise you we could win if we just group up that, that's all i gotta say yeah so would you rather them run it down like jay shreds is saying instead of leaving yes yes i would <laughs> rather them run it down because well you know why because they can split push running it down another side of the lane while the actual team does something else somewhere else simple as that all right all right i'd rather have that uh, version of running it down bro because do you I, I just I don't know if I've noticed it before, but like, I've, I've never noticed this before. Your your pop filter it seems like it's a lot smaller than your mic there. Your your mic seems huge, and your pop filter seems very small there. F six like what? Oh, it's a foam. It's a it's for the it's kind of like a wing guard. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It really, like really windy down there. It's like a separate pop. It's a it's a separate pop filter. <laughs> it's he basically has two pop filters right now. Is essentially what he has. Right. Yeah. Right. Essentially. Yeah. Got Use it for casting my casting yeah. settings that's all that's all okay there we go all right Ooh. uh all right uh as for myself uh again um give the matchmaker some time that's my my advice to the community uh you keep playing put the data points out there because j shreds and the team uh, uh they're doing a great job of uh making the adjustments that are needed i i literally felt i i noticed the difference from tuesday to wednesday i'm like there's something different with this i was solo queue on tuesday was straight atrocious like this game was bad I, I, like this is horrible i don't know what's going on so like you wednesday felt a lot better i'm like okay i can actually play this game and feel good about it um so uh give them time put, keep playing the game put the data points out there help them out uh because the more data points they get the better it is going to be for the matchmaker in general um so keep playing the game that we're in early access that's what this is for if you guys are complaining about the game being bad or whatever it's not a full release game at that point when it comes to a full release game then you can complain about that situation but i'm sure by that time everything will be ironed out will be in a better smoother running game um 
for myself though uh monday tuesday wednesday thursday are my stream times i would say that one of those days was a, a for, for the podcast uh but until they get back to that two week four week cycle uh <laughs> we're you know that once a month situation so uh uh robbie uh what have you got to do to get back to that two week four week cycle let's get back to that so we can get the podcast going more consistently uh because the community is asking us i literally i know when you's getting it in his his uh stream chats i'm getting it in my stream chat hey what's podcast hey what's podcast hey what's Predcast? Hey, Predcast? Uh, i love to give it to you guys every week but we can't sit here and do everything and just repeat ourselves non-stop so we need more content to talk about that's on Meta. that's balls in your court help us out um but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, 11, sorry, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11.30 Standard Eastern, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, right here on this channel. If you're on YouTube, it's The Bearded Wolverine. If you want to find me on Twitter, that's T underscore B underscore Wolverine. Uh, Twitter doesn't allow me to do my full name. Screw them. Um, and ah, other than that, though, I appreciate everybody hanging out. Uh, and I do a real quick shout out to my boy Stunt for that huge fucking... Uh, Why don't you get uh, the subs? gifted subs he did man that was huge great greatly appreciated man uh and shout out to everybody who followed i got a bunch of followers in this this stream as well so greatly appreciate all of you thank you when do I'll, I'll wait for my check in the mail oh <laughs> <laughs> oh you better keep waiting for that slim jim anyway it cost me more uh, <laughs> it cost me more in stamps than it is <laughs> um but no uh so the little t uh, tidbit that i give people is don't forget to support support these creators there's a lot of creators that are coming up on the the streaming yeah. scene uh, a lot of active like activity going on as far as the content creation youtube side also uh a lot of our fan favorites are getting a lot of love and that's awesome a little overdue for a lot of them but uh don't forget to still support you know up and coming creators like a, a new youtube video low, you know low amount of subscribers or something like that or like you go on twitch click on the person with only two views show them some love makes a difference right so uh just keep the community engagement and honestly as far as me i i've been getting some pretty good feedback as far as like the educational content that i made lately so i'm probably gonna drop a couple more of those so be on the lookout on that side and uh yeah if you guys made it this far into the video just wherever it's at whether you're watching it live now or whether you're watching on youtube after the fact type a gg in the chat in the comments wherever you're watching just to let us know that you made it this far we appreciate all of you watching and we'll try to get you more episodes as, as frequently as possible if you all have not watched windows most recent videos on the upgraded patch you literally need to go watch it it is a great video he breaks down how to do use the flowers he breaks down how to use uh argus he breaks down how to kite the the minions in the jungle he breaks down a lot of stuff with version 15. he also broke it up in, in individual videos so if you're not a jungler and you don't want to know anything about that boom here's how to play argus if you're a jungler and you want to understand what's going on boom there's the there's the flowers boom here's that he did a great job and it's a great video literally check it out make sure you give him a subscribe uh subscription there it, it was an amazing job amazing job keep it up man spicy spicy appreciate it fam and uh yeah honestly guys as always we'll uh we'll catch you guys on the next one peace peace bye